Is everything in place? Almost. What do you mean, almost? I have spoken with Montreal. The broadcast satellites are ours when we need them. A few weeks of discomfort, and the public will be primed for our recall. And the clinics? We can hold the post to it. They will do as we say. I still think we should wait for the referendum. We can't afford to wait. America's Science Board convenes next month. But the mood among the delegates is shifting. I'm positive that given more time... No. By going public with this discovery, Syrof is forcing our hand. The world will not change overnight just because David Syrof wills it. Besides, we can do nothing until our biochip is ready. I thought you said you were close. Finding the correct nerve interface has proven more challenging than anticipated. Fortunately, thanks to David, I now know where to look. And in Washington tonight, crowds continue to gather in front of the Capitol. Most are demanding that Congress severely restrict efforts to alter the human body's abilities. This in response to claims made by biotechnology expert David Seraph that his firm may have discovered a way to make human-controlled evolution available to all. Seraph Industries researchers are set to arrive in Washington tomorrow to defend their claim. But for tonight, this is Eliza Kassab reporting to you live. With all due respect, Major, I'll expect two security details waiting for us, on the tarmac. No, we won't be going through the terminal, it's too exposed. Yes. I'm glad you understand. Good night, idiot. Something wrong? No, not for me it isn't. But you keep pulling on that necklace, Dr. Reed, and you're gonna break it. Come on, Meg. You've defended your research before. That was different. Then it was all just theories. But this discovery, Adam? It's big. Kepler big. Rosetta Stone big. So, what's the problem? They'll want to know how I found it. Megan, we're leaving for DC and... Adam, you're there? Good, good. You need something, boss? Yeah. I want to go over your security plans for Washington before we leave. You and your team ready to go, Megan? Almost, David. We're just rechecking data. Well, make it snappy. We have to actually be in Washington before you can dazzle all those federally appointed know-it-alls. I hate it when he does that. Come on, I'll walk you part way. Patient X. That's nothing, Adam. Just some of the research. Look, we really have to go. You know, you really should get in the habit of locking your computer, Meg. Hey, stop reading my emails. Warning. This lab is for authorized personnel only. What did you mean back there, Meg? About how you found it? Nothing. It's just my nerves talking. There's something I should know about this place, about Sarif. Megan! Hold on. We're still getting biochemical fluctuations across the artificial flow cells. Okay, but the increased neuropeptides coming from the PDOT cluster could be throwing off your calibrations. Right, I'll double check that. I can't believe you were asking about David. You've been here long enough to know of... Eric! You wouldn't be avoiding me, would you? I wouldn't dream of it, Dr. Reed. I think I know why Declan's readings are off. Too many peptides? I'm thinking the glial tissue breakdown we noticed after splicing in the repressive protein might be the cause. If we had a better cytometer... We might get a more accurate reading of the theory. I'll ask David times. to consider it. Well, if he orders one from Page Industries, maybe they'll throw in another cappuccino maker. You overthink everything, Adam. The work we're doing is good. We're helping people overcome their physical limitations. Yeah, except most of our clients seem to be DOD. You're doing it's good. Not all it's military. another hour to go. We work with teachers, doctors, construction workers. Oh. <gasps> Damn it! Watch it, Eddie! Those boxes are worth more than your salary. Sorry, sorry. Nia, you almost ready? Washington? 
Huh? Ah, Dr. Reed. This is General O'Neill. Dr. Sevchenko was telling me you've made progress on the Typhoon. Yes, thanks to Vasily, actually. As I was saying, sir, the Typhoon uses a modified combat chassis like the one I'm wearing. But I've improved its design using shaped microcharges to propel the steel walls. And the backblast problem? Solved through kinetic bleeders in the augment. Here, watch. Go ahead. Impressive. How soon till it's ready? I'm afraid I have to run, but Vasily has all the details, General. Of course. We still have some work to do to improve the time. You're right. The teacher would just love having one of those things. You're missing the point. Defense contracts keep us afloat. But neural augmentations that make you think faster, react quicker, they can really improve a life. Everybody's lives. David's talked about it for years. Yeah. He is a talker. He's a good man. Admit it, Adam. A part of you likes him. No, I like everyone, Dr. Reed. Yeah, right. How far are you going? Diane's office. I forgot to leave her a key so she can walk Kubrick. He's gotten big, you know. Keeps knocking over all my plants. Did you destroy that vase yet? I moved it. And I fenced in the yard. Like you always said you were going to. Yeah. Never got around to that. <laughs> Sorry. Me too. About a lot of things. Adam, I... There's something I... Good evening. Richard. So, are we all ready for the trip? There's Farida. I'd better hurry. See you at the helipad, Adam. Sure. Did I uh, interrupt something, Jensen? You fix that firewall yet? You don't fix an entire firewall. You find the loophole and plug it. Then did you plug it? Yes, I did. You want to know how? Oh, wait, I forgot. Ex-cop. I doubt you'd understand. Ex-SWAT. And you'd be surprised. Seraph has to see you too. Athena. She wants me to show her how to track our scientist implanted locator devices. In case your security plans in Washington don't measure up. They will. Gentlemen, how wonderful to see you both. Go right in, Adam. He's waiting. This is the newest in encrypted GPL trackers, Athena. It transmits data to our dedicated satellites. I don't care what it takes. I want you, Darrow, in Washington, by my side. The man doesn't jump for anyone. He's a Nobel Prize winner. Senators love this guy, Lyle. The hearings will go much smoother with him there. Big day for us tomorrow. Everything in place? Yes, sir. Capitol Police will escort us to the Hill, and then Federal Protection Services takes over. Good, good. How's our girl holding up? She's nervous. All she has to do is show him her research. She explained it to you? Not really into the whole science thing, boss. It's incredible. All those purists out there accusing us of tampering with the natural order when all Megan's done is figure out how to unlock the potential that exists within our own DNA. It's safer and easier than anything you, Darrow, ever did. Environmental malfunction. Laboratory subsection 6. All lab chiefs, please report in. We better not take any chances. Not tonight. Use my elevator to get down there. You know the code? Yeah, 0451. Let me know what you find. Athena, get someone to shut off the damn racket. Pritchard, where's Megan? She reporting yet? Her GPL implant shows her moving through the microchem labs. I think she's running. Damn. Must have been a serious equipment failure. Can you get eyes on her? I'm trying, but the IntelliCams aren't responding. There's interference coming from somewhere. Find out what's happening, Jensen. Hurry! Richard? Richard!
probe shows the bullet caused severe hematoma. We need to repair that artery. Thank God, I thought it was a glass. David, you in the building? Just entered the lobby. Sorry to pull you out of sick leave so soon, but uh, we've got a situation. A breaking out of Milwaukee Junction factory. Meet me at the helipad. I have to see Pritchard first. Something's wrong with my retinal enhancement. Frank's on the second floor in the tech lab. Make it quick. People's lives are at stake. About time. What happened? You get stuck in an air duct on the way over? Yeah, nice to see you too, Francis. Something's wrong with my retinal display. Can you fix it? If it's what I think it is, probably. Of course, it might seem. Oh, looks like your left and right imaging processors weren't completely in sync. But don't worry, your sentinel health implant will kick in soon, repairing any damage that might have caused. Your retinal display should be fine now. Its recognition software won't be picking up hostiles yet, but you should be seeing radar and targeting reticules. Biomedical data too, if you're in pain. Right. We done here? Because Seraph is waiting for me at the helipad. I know. Radicals have broken into our manufacturing plant and taken hostages. Maybe this time you'll actually save people. If you got a problem with me, Pritchard, why don't you just say it and get it over with? Why no, Jensen. I don't have a problem with you. If anything, I blame myself. The mighty Pritchard blaming himself. <laughs> That's gotta be a first. I'm the one who told Sarif we needed a physical security team to protect us. If he'd read my report closely enough... Wait a second. Are you saying it was your idea to hire me? Not you, Jensen. I wanted Dynacore, Sharp Edge, or Bell Tower. All the top private security contractors were on my list. But Sarif wanted somebody in-house. 
and so did Dr. Reed. I suggest you leave Megan out of this. Why, Jensen? It's no secret how close the two of you were. And let's face it, you'd just been fired from SWAT for that massacre in Mexican town. No one was about to hire you. You really have to stop getting your news from those Pikus blogs, Francis. They only confuse you. The point is, if Sarif had listened to me, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But Megan, God love her, always did have Sarif's ear. Sarah's here is going to be hearing a report about violence in the workplace if you keep this up. You really feel like continuing? Point taken. Adam, how close are you to the helipad? Almost there. Good. Because SWAT's about to turn this into a PR nightmare. Meet me in the chopper. I'll brief you as we go. Welcome back, Jensen. Didn't think we'd see you around here for a while yet. You know how it goes, Malik. Duty calls. Don't I know it. I was in my wingsuit halfway to the top of the Renaissance Center when I got the 911. But you? Six months is a hell of a short time to come back from the dead. You sure you're ready for this? Only one way to find out. Roger that. The boss is already on board, arguing with the DPD's tactical response team. They've got the plant surrounded, but Mr. Seraf wants you to go in first. Are you all set here? Because the sooner we take off, the better it will be for everyone. I'm ready. Great. Then let's get airborne. I told Farida to put us down on a roof. I don't want the crowd seeing you go in. Fine. As long as she pulls you out the minute I'm gone. So what am I looking at here? Who are these guys? Pro-human purists, or so they say. The same purists who've been firebombing limb clinics all over the country. You buy that? Nah, I don't think it's a coincidence they hit us today, only hours after we moved the Typhoon in for assembly line factoring. The Typhoon? Megan's team was testing it the day that bastard... Who's on point for these guys? Adam. I know you and Megan were once... Who is on point for these guys? Goes by the name of Sanders. That's him, there. He's an augmented Adam. So he can't be one of the mercs who attacked us. But he did know exactly how to get inside our plant. Alright. So how do you want me to handle this? First priority is the Typhoon. I'm keeping SWAT out until you've secured it. As far as rules of engagement go, I'll defer to you. Lethal or non-lethal? I'm not looking to start a firefight in there, just neutralize them. Okay, but just make sure those bastards don't wake up and warn their friends. You remember what it's like in there? A lot of tight enclosed hallways, but the labs themselves are pretty open. High ceilings. So. Do you want something you can use from a distance, or up close? Give me something with distance. If I get too close, I'll take them out personally. Just try not to break anything expensive. The Typhoon should be in the factoring labs, but Pritchard will tell you more as you go in. I've got him running comms. Terrific. Anything else? Keep your eyes open for hostages. Free them if you can, but the Typhoon is your number one priority. We developed it for the Alphabet agencies, and if we don't deliver it to them intact and still a secret, well, I'm sure you'll get the job done right.
At any point during the game, you can access Tell me you're the guy we've been twiddling our thumbs waiting for. SI Security. Name's Jensen. Jensen? Yeah. I thought I recognized you. Used to be on Team 2 till that Mexican town thing went down. I gotta say, you're the last person I pictured taking orders from a CEO. Things change. Not always for the better. Feel like getting in there and doing whatever it is your boss wants you to do? Because maybe then we can do our job. We've got people inside. Any idea where I should look for them? Yeah. Your plant manager, Josie Thorpe, managed to slip a call out before someone snatched her cell. She said the hostages are being held in an office near the assembly labs. Makes sense. The workers were setting up for a production run, so they'd have been concentrated there. You know more about that than I would. Anything else? You look pretty dug in up here. What's the React team plan? We got Alpha as point and Bravo as wing, both standing by to breach the target. We're coordinating from here, but until your boss gives us the go-ahead, we're just holding our dicks. Realistically, how much time do I have before any shooting starts? According to protocol, none. According to your lawyers, the sooner you get in there, the sooner we can hose this powder keg down and call it a day. Intel on these purists. How much you got? How much you want? The leader's name is Sanders, right? What's his story? Zeke Sanders. We're running background on him now. Looks like he fought two tours in the Gulf. One of them on a recycled military bill. You mean he's augmented? Seraph told me he's not. He used to be augmented. Says his augs made him do evil shit, so he ripped him out. Now he's got a whole crew of gullible street kids listening to his crap and ready to die for him. Or kill. How many am I looking at down there? Hard to say. We've spotted three in the courtyard, maybe half a dozen inside. But that's a sketchy estimate at best, since we seem to be getting a loop playback off your intellicams. That shouldn't be possible. I told Seraph to make sure Pritchard overhauled the system. Well, someone inside must be tech-savvy, because all we're seeing is a loop. For all we know, there could be five, ten, or three dozen perps in there. They communicate any demands yet? Not yet, but I get the feeling they're not that organized. Most of the guys I've seen look like street bangers and thugs. The kind who get their jollies trashing equipment. You ask me, is the man in charge you have to worry about? I think I've heard enough. You sure? Wouldn't want to make your boss unhappy. I got it from here. Sit tight. Wait for Seraph's signal. Like we got a choice. Getting too close to any... Yeah, everything seems under control. No sign of SWAT. No sign of anyone.
Where's the bomb squad? Do something! Hurry! Save us! Richard, get word to Seraph. I found the hostages. I'm relaying good news, I hope. They're safe. And they're staying put. SWAT will have to expel them as soon as I've got the prototype. I'll tell Seraph, but don't take too long. Listen up. I need you all to stay calm, keep your voices down, and wait here for SWAT. The plant's not clear yet. Not clear? But those terrorists, they've got my wife! Your wife? She's the manager here. Josie, Josie Thorpe. They said they needed her to open the administration building. They were looking for evidence of some kind. Please, I haven't seen her since. You have to find her. I'll do my best. But right now, I need you all to stay here and wait for the police. Can you do that? Yes, of course. But please, hurry. You said they were looking for evidence? What kind of evidence? I... I don't know. They're purists. They think the body is sacred and shouldn't be tampered with. They probably want something that will implicate us in moral wrongdoings. Did they know about the typhoon? It's a top secret contract. How could they? And we only moved it in a few hours ago. Please, I don't think they expected anyone would be working today. And now that they're backed into a corner, you have to find my wife, please.
You know I can't let you go with her. Stand down, Hanser! I told you. Stand down or this bitch is dead. Bullshit. You're bigger than that. You don't kill civilians. Damn right. I'm a decorated vet. And I won't be jerked around. I need to find out who's behind this, and right now the boss lady's my only ticket out of here. Listen to me. Whatever's going on, it's big. You've got a better chance of getting to the bottom of it if you work with me. But I can't do a thing until you let her go. Are you stupid? I don't work with Oggs. God, you must think I'm some kind of moron. And who can blame you? Because it's exactly what it must look like to everyone right now. Trapped in here by the cops, and my only option is to take a hostage. How screwed up is that? You got a lot of nerve insulting me, considering your success rate today. You were played for a fool. You led your people into a trap, and now you're on the verge of getting yourself killed. Unless you let her go. Did I ask for your opinion just now? You augmented Hansers are as bad as the cops. It's all about who's got the most power. Well, right now, I got the power to decide whether she lives or dies. And you got nothing, sucker. The only thing the cops are focused on right now is the safety of the civilians. Same as you. You've risked your life to do what's best for other people. You're not some drive-by banger. I know that. The question is, do they? The cause is blowing up all around me. My brother's at risk. All because of what that traitor did to us tonight. I've got to fix it, but I can't when I'm stuck in here with you. Listen, the hacker's plan was for you to die. He knew there would be civilians here tonight. He thought of everything. He used your brother because he knew you would trust him. That's how well he knows you. He expected you to take a hostage, just like he knew the cops would kill you for it. You're right. Damn! You know, he even asked me once about hostages. I told him I would if I had to. I thought I had to here, but I can't afford you, can I? Go on, get out of here. You're free to go. I did what you wanted. So let me go. I got played here too, I see. I've got as much interest in finding out who's really behind this as you do, Cameron. Yeah, well... Maybe I'll owe you one. But I promise you this. Someone's gonna pay. Any sign of him? Adam! Adam, what's happening? What's your situation? Adam! Sanders is gone, boss. But I'm pretty sure he's just a dupe. Somebody else set this up. Damn it. Okay, I want you back here now. The admin building has a rooftop terrace. Meet Farida on it. Copy. Jensen out. Are you alright? I'm fine. I'm fine. Just a little shaken up, but... What about the other hostages? My husband was with them in one of the assembly labs. And I overheard talk about a bomb. Don't worry, they're safe. Oh, thank God. When those men surprised us. Mr. Jensen, they should not have been able to get in. With the typhoon being moved in and all, 
I double check the protocols myself. Yeah, I expect Pritchard's doing the same thing right now. Stay here. DPD will want to question you. But you and your husband should be reunited soon. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. You're a hero. Jensen? You're the guy who was sent in before us? Those hostages owe you a lot. Nice going. But my wife, she's still in there. I, I, I need to know that she's okay. You'll have to wait until the bill. My wife, is she all right? She's fine. A little shaken up, though. Swab will need to debrief her. But you'll see her soon. I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I think I've given up on her. You're a true hero, man. I'll find some way to repay this, I swear. There's no need for that. I was just doing my job. Don't be modest. Uh, I didn't recognize you before, but I know who you are, Mr. Jensen. And I know you weren't supposed to be back at work yet. Thank God you are. I'll be in touch. Count on it. You made a lot of people happy tonight, Jensen. And not just the men in suits. It's what they pay me for. No. They pay you to put corporate interests ahead of people. You found a way to satisfy everyone. Guess Dr. Reed was telling the truth about you. Megan? What are you talking about, Malik? Before you were hired. She said the papers were lying about Mexican Town. That you weren't fired from the force. You quit when you realized Protect and Serve had become Protect and Serve the corporate interest. Nice to see she was right. You ready to go? Yeah, get me out of here, Malik. Your wish is my command. Climb in. New orders just in, Jensen. The boss wants Pritchard to examine the Typhoon ASAP. Copy that. Thanks for the lift. No problem. Hey, and, uh, Jensen. I just wanted to say, new look suits you. Like, you haven't missed a beat at all. Thanks. So, how's it feel? Being augmented. Excuse me? Don't take it the wrong way. I mean, I've got a few neuro enhancements myself. Discreet ones to help me fly better. But I chose to get them implanted. You didn't. Now that you had a chance to try him out, what do you think? You're right. I didn't choose to get augmented. And I still don't know if I would have if given the choice. But today felt good. Surprisingly good. Dr. Reed said you'd take to them. Said it was in your genes. Just be careful, okay? A lot of people think there's a reason the human body rejects this technology over time. I didn't peg you for the type who gets caught up in metaphysical debates, Malik. I'm not. I told you myself, I've got neuro enhancements. I'm just saying the choices we do get to make inevitably have consequences. Yeah. Tell that to the bastard who did this to me. I hear you. And you know what? You're not the only person in this place who wants to find him. So if I can help in any way, all you gotta do is ask. Actually, there is something. I wanna know about the first attack. Fine. Ask away.
I've been thinking about why they attacked. What they were really after. Isn't it obvious? They didn't want us going to Washington. No, that was just timing. Hearings can be rescheduled. Somebody else can present Megan's findings. I don't think so, Jensen. They took out her whole team. Declan Faraday, Vasily Sevchenko, Nia Colvin, even Eric Koss. The labs their bodies were found in. Were burned to a crisp. I know. The only reason you weren't caught in the fire was because that retaining wall came down. Saved your life, believe it or not. So the whole attack was just to destroy Megan's research. Sure looks that way. Mr. Seraph is hoping to reconstruct it, but it may take months. If he can keep us solvent that long. You were there that night. What do you remember about it? That it was chaos. First, everybody figured there'd been some kind of accident, but Pritchard couldn't get a good visual and communications were haywire. Then we heard the explosions. By the time anyone knew what had hit us... They were gone. Whoever they were, they were good, Jensen. Special training good. Did anyone else see them? The men who attacked? Not well enough to get a description. Pritchard got some fuzzy images off one of the Intellicams, but his tapes were all confiscated by Homeland Security. Homeland? I heard Homicide passed it over to Special Investigations. Detroit Special Investigations. They did. For the first month. After that... All I really know is, the case is still pending. And Mr. Seraph is not pleased. I'm gonna find him, Malik. One way or another. I believe you. And just so you know, when you do, I've got your back. I appreciate that, Malik, but right now... You've got to get the Typhoon into the tech lab, right. See you later, then. Oh, and Jensen, the boss wants a face-to-face -face debrief in his office once it's secure. Roger that. Good night, Malik. Well, if it isn't Mahatma Gandhi himself, come to honor us all with his life-preserving presence. If this is about the Typhoon, I'll get to it in a minute. Now, Pritchard. I didn't risk my neck to have you lose it in a pile of CPUs and SCSI adapters. Well, look at you, using the big words. Don't think just because you hacked through the plant security system so fast that you're an expert on everything computer. There's a reason I can't examine the Typhoon yet. Do tell. For your information, I am running a diagnostic sweep on our network and router security to find out how Sanders Hacker got a hold of our codes. I'd have thought the first question to ask is, whose codes were they? Unless you already know. Stick to kicking down doors and shooting people, Jensen, and stop trying to do my job. I guarantee you we'll get along better that way. I'm telling you, Hugh, he might not have put the gun in Sanders' hand, but it was Taggart's speech to the UN that started all this. William Taggart is nothing if not a shrewd political operator. You know that, David. So for the sake of appearances, I have to look him in the eye and let him bullshit me? With a smile. Always with a smile. We'll talk later. to see me yeah how you feeling I've had better days well when we're done here check him with dr. Markovic at the limb clinic downtown can here to get a checkup if you insist listen about Sanders yeah about Sanders what the hell were you thinking letting him slip away like that I sent you in there to take care of things
And I did. The Typhoon is safe. Sanders didn't know about it. He didn't even know his hacker was augmented. He's not the mastermind behind this, boss. So you cut him a break? The man broke into my facility and took hostages at him. I thought you were ready for this. I am. Today's attack was just a shell game being run by somebody else. I intend to find out who and why so that it never happens to anybody again. Good, cause so do I. That hacker in Sanders' group, you're sure he was augmented? I pulled his cables out myself. Yeah, well, the police are saying he's not, and they're refusing to let me see the body, no matter how much money I threaten to pull from their retirement fund. Maybe someone else is offering more. So what do you want me to do, boss? We have to get a look at the corpse. You still got friends in the force? You think, uh... You think one of them will let you into the morgue? Depends who I run into. Get over to the station and find a way inside. Because if that hacker was augmented, his neural hub might tell us who he was. Contact me when you've gotten a hold of it. Boss, what you're asking me to do, it's not exactly legal. No, it isn't. You got a problem with that? Just figured I'd point it out. Oh, thanks. And believe me, if I had another option, we'd be taking it. But these past six months, Seems like all the influence I built up in this city just dried up and blew away. Well, you were able to keep SWAT from infiltrating the plant until I got the Typhoon. Just barely. And now someone else is pulling strings to keep us in the dark? We need that neural hub, son. It's key to finding out who's behind these attacks. And taking up the men who did it. I'm on it. For your information, I am running a diagnostic sweep on our network and router security to find out how Sanders Hacker got a hold of our codes. I'd have thought the first question to ask is, whose codes were they? Unless you already know. Stick to kicking down doors and shooting people, Jensen, and stop trying to do my job. I guarantee you will get along better that way. I'm telling you, Hugh, he might not have put the gun in Sanders' hand, but it was Taggart's speech to the UN that started all this. William Taggart is nothing if not a shrewd political operator. You know that, David. So for the sake of appearances, I have to look him in the eye and let him bullshit me? With a smile. Always with a smile. We'll talk later. see me? Yeah, how you feeling? I've had better days. Well, when we're done here, check him with Dr. Markovic at the Limb Clinic downtown. Can't hurt to get a checkup. If you insist. Listen, about Sanders? Yeah, about Sanders. What the hell were you thinking? Letting him slip away like that? I sent you in there to take care of things.
And I did. But Typhoon is safe. Sanders didn't know about it. He didn't even know his hacker was augmented. He's not the mastermind behind this, boss. So you cut him a break? The man broke into my facility and took hostages at him. I thought you were ready for this. I am. Today's attack was just a shell game being run by somebody else. I intend to find out who and why, so that it never happens to anybody again. Good, because so do I. That hacker in Sanders' group, you're sure he was augmented? I pulled his cables out myself. Yeah, well, the police are saying he's not, and they're refusing to let me see the body, no matter how much money I threaten to pull from their retirement fund. Maybe someone else is offering more. So what do you want me to do, boss? We have to get a look at the corpse. You still got friends on the force? You think, uh... You think one of them will let you into the morgue? Depends who I run into. Get over to the station and find a way inside. Because if that hacker was augmented, his neural hub might tell us who he was. Contact me when you've gotten a hold of it. Boss, what you're asking me to do, it's not exactly legal. No, it isn't. You got a problem with that? Just figured I'd point it out. Oh, thanks. And believe me, if I had another option, we'd be taking it. But these past six months, Seems like all the influence I built up in this city just dried up and blew away. Well, you were able to keep SWAT from infiltrating the plant until I got the Typhoon. Just barely. And now someone else is pulling strings to keep us in the dark? We need that neural hub, son. It's key to finding out who's behind these attacks. And taking up the men who did it. I'm on it. That hacker's not gonna be sitting still for long. Get over to the station. Adam, were you just speaking to David? I didn't know he'd finished his call. Is everything okay? As well as can be expected. Right, like I know what that means anymore. The phone's been ringing off the hook ever since Bill Taggart's little press conference this evening. Taggart? Saraf was speaking about him when I walked in. What's the founder of the Humanity Front saying about us now? Oh, he's all sincere this time. Denouncing all the violence that's been committed against us, offering to come here in person to express his deepest sympathies. Right. No wonder the boss seems grumpy. Can you blame him? If it were up to Luddites like Taggart, you would have died on that operating table. The problem is, he knows how to play on people's fears. Tampering with human biology can be pretty scary. Tell that to all the war ants whose lives have been improved because of it. But if Taggart has his way, if he can sway popular opinion enough, then the United Nations will be forced to take a stand. Mark my words, that man is trouble.
Hey, Jensen, glad to see ya. Damn it, now I sound like his girlfriend or something. Hey, Jensen. Man, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're back. How are you holding up? I manage. I'm sorry about Megan. I know it must be hard. For a while, we thought you were a goner, too. Everything's going to shit. The attack on HQ, and now this mess with the factory. Yeah, tough times all around. How about you, Corella? You okay? I don't know. I... Uh, I fucked up. I mean bad. What happened? Well, a couple of months ago, me and Tyndall, you know, one of Pritchard's techs, we started sneaking out some neuropazine from one of the labs. Jesus, Tim. You realize this could get you fired. Worse, arrested, if the company chooses to prosecute. What were you thinking? I know. It's just... it's complicated. I didn't want to do it at first, but there were good reasons. Anyway, now I want out, but Tyndall has security footage of me stealing the stuff and says he'll expose me if I ever stop helping him. I'm in a bad spot, Adam. I need that footage back. I know you're busy with everything that's going on right now, but I could really use your help. All right, tell me more. Really? Wow, thanks, Adam. I thought I was done for. The security footage will probably be on his apartment computer. Meet me in front of the subway station parking lot once you get a hold of it. Care to give me a few more details on exactly what it is you want me to do? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. The footage will probably be in his apartment. On his computer, maybe. So what? I just look him up in the phone book? His apartment is near Brooklyn Court. It might be tough to get in because his building has a large security gate protecting it. Well, that's just great. Hacking the security gate is possible, but would require advanced hacking skills. You might have to look around for an alternate path. Maybe use the fire escape or something. Mrs. Reed? Oh, Adam. I'm sorry you startled me. And please, call me Cassandra. You and Megan were together long enough. I was waiting for you. Out here? Why not come meet me inside? I don't know. I guess I'm just not ready. But this is where you work. But to me, this is also the place where I lost my daughter. I know what you mean. It's never been the same for me, either. I guess it's not meant to be easy. It seems there's just no right way to deal with something like this. And I can't even begin to imagine how things have been for you, after all you've been through. Yeah. A lot of things changed six months ago. I can't get over how much they've... changed you. At first, I couldn't even believe you were still alive. How do you handle all of this? They did what they had to do to save me. And in a way, I can do more now than I ever could. I'm glad to know you take it so well. Many of us wouldn't be able to cope so easily with such traumatic changes. Can I ask why you wanted to see me? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. I'm here about Megan. About what happened to her. Or rather, about the investigation into what happened. What about it? Well, simply put, I feel something is not quite right with the way the case was handled. You think there was some foul play involved? I do. Call it mother's intuition. But when speaking to some of the investigators, there were a lot of inconsistencies. And then I met this detective, a man called Chase. He agreed things weren't handled by the book, although he has no proof. And now you want to find out more? I'll never hear my daughter laugh again, Adam. I'll never get a call from her to ask how I've been, or have the chance to ask her about her day. She was stolen from me. However unjustified this all is, I still want to know why it happened. I can see why she loved you. 
Not even that degree of mechanical modification could change what she saw in you. Please, will you help me find out what really happened to her? I never got a chance to investigate the attack myself. I'll look into it. Thank you. This means the world to me, Adam. Really. The first thing I'll need to do is meet with this detective, Chase. Good. He works part-time as a security guard in an apartment building on Brooklyn Court. I'll be waiting for you in your apartment lobby once you're done. Why does a detective need to work part-time as a security guard? Oh, he retired soon after the case. I don't really know the details. Maybe he'll tell you more. I'm on it. Hello there. Well, you must be Adam Jensen. A keen observation. Mrs. Reed told me you might pay me a visit. And don't take this the wrong way, but you're kind of hard to miss. I'll try to take that as a compliment. She told me you might have information regarding Megan Reed's case and the attack on Seraph headquarters. Oh boy, what a mess. Total pissing match. We had the feds on our ass, orders from three different departments, and pressure from so many lobbyists it felt like being the scrawny new kid in a prison shower. It is a very high-profile case. Mrs. Reed said you thought some procedures were overlooked. You got that right. I mean, you know how it is. Mrs. Reed told me you used to be a cop. There's always cases where you see the lazy officers taking shortcuts. But this... this was different. Different how? Too much stuff got overlooked. People seemed way too eager to jump to conclusions, and every time I was remotely insistent, I got turned down by ranking officers. People wanted to bury this thing fast. That's never a good sign. Surely you have something more substantial than this. Yeah, well, that's where you come in. I got a couple of leads I could never fully investigate. I started poking around, but these government-type agents just gave me the creeps. I, I got scared. Months away from retirement, I didn't want to fuck things up. But you? You obviously have the means to get to the bottom of this. So what have you got? First off, there's a rumor that the order to close the investigation came from higher up, maybe even outside the local department. Anything like that would have passed through Captain Penn. There might be traces of this left on his office computer. Guess I'll have to pay a visit to the local precinct. Well, well, while you're there, there was an officer assigned to the case, Chet Wagner. He's not what you call a choir boy. And when he suddenly got brought on the case, I got suspicious. Somebody wanted him there. And I'm pretty sure he tampered with some of the evidence. You should talk to him. Find out what he knows. Okay, I'll have a little chat with Officer Wagner. You'll most likely find him in the lobby. He got retrograded from his conduct, and he takes depositions now. He won't budge easily, but I'm pretty sure you can find some dirt on him on his desktop. His office is on the third floor. He might find something there to help loosen up his tongue. Anything else worth looking into? Yeah, when the order came down to close the case, the bulk of the evidence was stashed in a storage locker. Maybe you can find some interesting stuff in there. It's on the alley right next to the station. The code is 40... 4891. But I know an outside agency had access to that locker, so be careful. Thanks for the heads up. Bah, it's, it's nothing. And, uh, oh, uh, please. Don't bother coming back here with details. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad to help. But the less I know about this case, the better I'll feel. Why retire from the force only to become a security guard? I mean, it looks like you still love the work. I love the idea of being a cop. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to join the force. But I just got fed up. It's not like I imagined it. It's a job. Some people are good at it, while others just don't care. And it shows. This case, the Seraph case, it was just the last drop in a cup already full. How did you get assigned to this case? I didn't push for it, if that's what you mean. Why? I was you said an outside agency may have tampered with a storage locker. What did you mean by that? Well, I've seen, uh, I mean, I've heard that government agents may have locked up some of the more sensitive evidence in a safe inside the locker. Come on, Chase. What are you not telling me? Damn it. Okay, listen. 
I snooped around that locker before and found the safe code. But I kind of got caught by one of those guys. He knows I know, Jensen. If I give you the code, they'll know I talked. Call me negative, but I can't think of a nice outcome to that. Come on, Chase. You're the good guy, the honest cop. In a police flick, you'd be the straight arrow. You know deep down you want to do what's right. That safe code could mean a lot. Don't paint me as a hero, Jensen. I'm a regular guy. But you're right, though. I always try to do the right thing. The code is 7196. But do me a favor. Can you at least try to hack the damn thing before punching in the code? If I'm lucky, it'll be enough to throw them off. Welcome. I'm glad you came. I can never properly repay you for what you did, of course, but I would like to help out any way I can. What do you have in mind? There's a gentleman named Sarah who works in the area. His business causes him to move around quite a bit, but at the moment he's occupying an apartment in a building on Earl's Court. If you mention my name, he'll give you a discount on his wares. He deals in... well, he's a gun runner. How does a guy like you know someone like that? Growing up in my old neighborhood, you learn pretty quick to cultivate certain types of relationships. I can never thank you enough for what you did. Access granted. Jensen? What are you doing here? I think you know why I'm here, Tyndall. I want Corella's security footage back. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Seraph Industries' chief of security. I'm pretty sure I can find out about an edited security tape, so don't bullshit me. Ah, oh, shit. Listen, Jensen, I never wanted things to get this bad. I'm not a bad guy. I feel for Corella, I really do. But sometimes, for a good cause, you have to get your hands dirty. Oh. There's a good cause now? Oh, I see. You think I'm selling the stuff, right? I understand why this would seem like an obvious motive, especially to an ex-cop. But trust me, you shouldn't always take things at face value. I'm not selling the neuropazine. I'm giving it away. Giving it away? To who? To the people who need it. You think everyone gets augmented by choice? No. Shit happens. 
And then what? You're saddled with neuropazine injections for the rest of your life, and that shit costs money. But what choice do you have? Without the drug, you'll die. Rejection syndrome, crippling pain, that just ain't right. So I did the only decent thing to do. I stepped up. I can respect that. But blackmail is still blackmail. Corella wants out, and I'm here to make sure he gets out. Man, this whole thing is becoming way too much trouble. I've even got two local pushers on my back because they say my philanthropic actions are undercutting their profit. That's not your only problem. A gun-toting client was waiting for you in your apartment earlier. Really? In my apartment? Shit, the dealers probably sent him. Tell you what, I'll deal with the client later. You take care of the dealers, and the footage is yours. Look, you're right. You're in a tough situation. I wish I could help you out of it, but it's your mess, right? You're the one who's got to step up and do it. He sounds just like my old man. You're lucky I respected the dude. Here. Here's the footage. Guess I gotta face the mess I got myself in. Did you get it yet? Adam, please. You have to get that security footage back. I got the footage. You owe me one, Tim. Yeah, you got that right, Jensen. I mean, thank you so much. This is my life I just got back. Listen, I got a hold of a weapon mod. It's not much, but I figured a guy in your line of work could use it. Listen, I know you were trying to do a good thing, and I respect that. But you should do it through proper channels. Next time you might not get this lucky. Yeah, you're right, Adam. I know you're right. Listen, thanks again. You're asking me to pull off a heist, boss, inside a police station. It's gonna take time. Right. Well, if you can't talk your way past the lobby, there's gotta be another entrance outside, in back or on the roof. Save the frontal assault as a last resort. Yeah, yeah, hang on just a sec. Shit. Jensen? Haas. Surprised to see you here. Yeah, well, I guess you're better at looking out for yourself than I am. I don't have time for your self-pity. I need to get into the morgue. That's it? Ah, oh, forget it. I don't know what's going on with that body down there, but my orders come from the brass. No one gets in. First thing you say to me after almost two years is you want something? Should I have given you an order? You've always been very good at following those. God damn. Where do you get off being so self-righteous? You think I like this? Look at me. From SWAT team commander to a crummy desk sergeant in the Tubit precinct. I don't need this from you. I get enough of it at home. So either come up with something better than your usual attitude, or you can just forget it, because you came to me. Okay, look, you're angry, and you've got a right to be. I'm putting you in a bad position, but I have to get inside that morgue. I won't let it get back to you. I'm always in a bad position. I don't believe this. I just got my life back together and you show up. When's it gonna end? You know the moment I open that door, it's all over, right? I'll be lucky if all that happens is I get fired. Is it really that important? And you're right, it's not my risk to take. So I'm not gonna force you to do anything and I won't hold it against you. And what happened two years ago, I know it's killing you. We should talk about it sometime. 
I don't think I can. It all comes back to the kid, doesn't it? We were given a direct order, Jensen. So I took the shot. I followed orders. He was augmented, an unknown factor. He was too much of a risk. We all make mistakes, Wayne. Nobody blames you for it. You have to believe that and forgive yourself or you'll never put it behind you. I know. It's just so hard. There's something I've been waiting two years to tell you. I blame you, Jensen, for everything that happened. Because when the chips were down, you got the order to fire, you refused, I got stuck having to do it, and you just walked out of my life. That's when everything went to shit, when you abandoned me. Wayne, it was a bad situation. You didn't do anything wrong. Adam, I... Thanks. The door's unlocked. I'll tell the guys to let you through. Now, uh... I need to be alone for a while. What's up? Well, she knows what's what. Yeah? What do you want? Information. Then go bother the receptionist, Chrome Boy, instead of wasting my goddamn time. Not that kind of information. I want to know about the Seraf Industries case. Ha <laughs> ha! And I want a blowjob in a vintage 05 bar GT, so I guess we both keep on dreaming. Huh, metalhead? You talk tough, but we both know that's all you can do. Deep down, you're nothing but a coward. Well, trust me, tough guy. I'm the real thing. If you don't give me what I want, I won't beat you up. I'll kill you. Ah, uh, now listen, man. We... We obviously got off on the wrong foot here, right? <laughs> I don't want no trouble. Talk. Okay, look. I just came in one morning, and there was an email with my new assignment in it. Official business. But there were also specific instructions. I had to check out the lab for footage from an IntelliCam. They told me to take it and leave it near a garbage can somewhere near the lake. What was on it? Well, it's not crystal clear, but mainly it shows the boys who attacked Seraph as they were breaching the labs. And it looked like they were bringing something in with them. Eh, impossible to tell what. Who asked you to do this? You think I know? Orders are orders around here. They always come from above. And nobody asks questions. You just do what they say, and you hope you don't end up like Secretary Haas over there. Mr. Darrow has refused our repeated requests for an interview. This is Eliza Cassan. Reporting... About time. You the home sec guy I was ordered to wait for? Tell Manderley I didn't get the memo until I was halfway through the autopsy. By then, it was too late to close him up again. Right. So you recovered the neural hub? Tricky bit of work that was. A few inches lower and the bolt would have fried more than just the pedal connectors. As it is, I can't guarantee you'll get anything useful out of it, other than the fact that it's been modified. Modified? With what? Some kind of wet drive. But hey, I didn't look. Ultraviolet means ultraviolet, and I know how touchy you guys get when it comes to matters of national security. He's all yours. The hub's been detached, but I left it in the skull, as ordered. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got paperwork to fix. Boss, I got the neural hub. Looks like it's been modified with some kind of wet drive. Pritchard should have a look at it. 
No, don't bring it here. Frank's not finished running his diagnostic, and I don't want to risk connecting any tech to our networks till he's done. Especially if the tech is military. So what do you want me to do? Take the hop to your apartment. I'll have Frank contact you there. Jensen, I have a message for you. From one of your former colleagues. A detective Alexander. Jenny? What did she want? She said she could use some help if you could make your way over to Grand River Road. And might I just add, as wonderful as it is to have you back at the office, I am not your personal dating service. Have you found anything? Please, I've got to know what really happened to Megan. I've investigated all of Detective Chase's leads. You were right. Something was off with Megan's case. So, what did you find? Someone in the government, a man named Manderley, ordered that a specially appointed medical examiner perform the autopsy. He bypassed the local ME. Simply put, that's not a good sign. It sure doesn't sound good. There were only three people who got out of the labs alive. Me and two others. One died in the hospital a few days later. The second one, a lab tech, was ready to give a detailed description of what he saw. Funny thing is, by the time the investigators got to him, he couldn't remember a thing. You sound like you don't believe that. I don't. Not from the reports I've read. I think someone got to him first. An officer assigned to the case was asked to get rid of a major piece of evidence. Footage from one of our intellicams showed fuzzy images of the attackers bringing something inside the labs. What? What were they bringing in? I don't know. But for someone higher up to want that evidence gone, it must have been important. I got my hand on a test report that confirms what was bothering Chase. The attackers used excessive measures to make bodies and equipment unidentifiable. Oh my god, Megan. What do you make of this, Adam? I don't know exactly. I guess the idea was to leave no traces, no DNA evidence that would link back to them. But it just seems a bit too convenient. So what you're telling me is, we couldn't find anything conclusive? No, I'm sorry. But one thing's for sure. Somebody's been hard at work covering up and destroying evidence related to this case. Somebody with power, who wanted to erase anything that might have made the investigation linger. I'm sorry, Cassandra. I wish I had more tangible answers to give you. But I did stumble on something I think you should have. I found Megan's bracelet. I'm sure she'd want you to have it. Oh, Adam. That's very kind of you. Her grandmother gave it to her. She loved that bracelet very much. Thank you for all you did. And, um, do you... Do you know exactly how Megan died? I read the reports. She didn't suffer, Cassandra. I can promise you that. Thank you, Adam. It's not much, but it still brings me some comfort. I miss her so much. Don't worry, Cassandra, this is not over. I don't know how or when, but I will get to the bottom of this. I knew I was right to trust you, Adam. But please, be careful. It's strange. I thought knowing what really happened would make me feel better. But nothing will ever justify this. My daughter is gone, and I'll never get her back. 
I wish, I wish I could be sure she gets justice. Trust me, she will. Where are you, Jensen? I haven't gone all night. Hello, Pritchard. I'm almost in my apartment now. Well, when you do get in there, connect the neural hub to your computer. I've created a secure tunnel, and I'll take over remotely. You can access my personal computer. Who do you think configured your security protocols? Pritchard, the hub's connected. I know. Now be quiet and let me concentrate. I need his name, Pritchard, not his entire genetic history. That's not his DNA. It's the data he was trying to steal from us before he... My god, Jensen. Your suicide hacker didn't kill himself. You obviously didn't see his brain spidered all over the floor. No, no, you don't understand. The wet drive modification in this chip, it allows someone to hack through you. It turns you, quite literally, into a human proxy. So he wasn't working alone. Someone off-site was doing the actual hacking. Exactly. And whoever it was tried to hide his location by using multiple satellites. But I may have just traced him to here. An abandoned factory complex in Highland Park. Get me the address, Pritchard. Because if we're lucky, whoever pulled our terrorist strings might still be there. David. Let me guess. You're sending me to Highland Park. Not just yet. Frank's figured out why the network's been compromised. There's a persistent transmission coming from Derelict Row. Street gang territory? Well, our dead friend was posing as an Antioch. Who better to hide with than the D-Row ballers? Right. I'm on my way. Re-establishing security system. See you soon, Mr. Jensen. Jensen. I'd appreciate it if you instructed your street informants to use more conventional means of contacting you. What are you talking about, Pritchard? I mean, I found a message stapled to your door. Colo, alley off Bagley Avenue, Ezekiel. It's the RB turf, asshole. Don't try it. Don't worry. You crazy? They ain't just gonna let you go through. Jensen, I'd appreciate it if you instructed your street informants to use more conventional means of contacting you. What are you talking about, Pritchard? I mean, I found a message stapled to your door. Colo, alley off Bagley Avenue, Ezekiel. How cryptic. That's near Seraph HQ. I'll look into it. Oh, and it's Cholo. I see you got my message, Cabrón. Sanders. You're taking a risk meeting this close to Seraph headquarters. Same risk as you, considering you're the one who let me go. But I don't plan to stick around that long. Yeah? So what's this about? I did some house cleaning after the plant. And I turned up some intel on a gearhead motherfucker who used me and my brother. Tink left the pocket secretary behind. Don't say who he was working for, but it's got access codes, names, shit like that. Why are you giving it to me? Maybe I don't like feeling like I owe you. Or maybe I figured I'd send a snake to kill a snake. Take or leave it, pendejo. Either way, my debt is paid.
would you book me a trick inside Dero? What if some shit goes down? How am I even gonna get out of there? Don't worry, baby. I'll come to get you. You crazy? They ain't just gonna let you go through the front door? It's the way in on the fourth floor of the building next door. Or if you can get away, meet me in the sewers. What you say? I ain't crawling through no sewers on account of your bullshit. This DRB turf, asshole. Don't try it. What's the deal, baby? Need something? I'd much rather get with you than go in d -Row. Is that back door still open? No, good job. Frank just sent me the all clear. Now it's time to find the bastards who attacked us. Farina, are you standing by? On the line, boss. Jensen, you reading me? Loud and clear. Stay close to the antenna. Pritchard sent me the coordinates for it. I'm coming to pick you up. Mr. Jensen, your limo has arrived. You ready to leave? Yeah, let's go. Great. Detroit Local. This is Sarah Industries Bravo Echo Echo 008. Continuing on. Richard, you got coordinates on that factory yet? I was only able to pinpoint an approximate area, Jensen. So scout around and look for anything unusual. I'll keep monitoring the frequency in case it suddenly goes active. before we did. We can still reconfigure. Track this Yahoo down. It's too late for that. It's time to clean up. But what about the Dutchman? No loose ends, Barrett. I'll make the call. Get out of sight, now. Why, what's going on? They're here. The mercs who killed Megan and her team. Fuck! I'm going in. Jensen, that frequency we tracked just got a burst of activity. I think these guys might be pulling out. Yeah, I've kind of been getting that feeling. Any idea who's running the show? They're using some kind of code. But from what I can gather, the guy giving the orders is still a level below you. Nice job, Bridget. I'll find him.
looky here. We got us a Boy Scout. He must be the one who mucked up my operation at the morgue. Get rid of him, Barry. Oh, that's gonna be a pleasure. die on me yet. This Boy Scout's got a few questions to ask. Your leader, the one who called you Barrett. Who is he? Why is FEMA sending you after Seraph Industries? FEMA? <laughs> you think FEMA gives a rat's ass about some rinky-dink biotech corporation's company secrets? <laughs> you got worse enemies than FEMA. Yeah? Like who? Who? Get to Shanghai, hang shot, court gardens, <coughs> penthouse. Tell him, <coughs> tell him. <coughs> tell him Barrett sent you straight to hell. Jensen, what's going on down there? Those soldiers just sticks out like you wouldn't believe. <coughs> they see you. No, I was flying dark in case it got hot. You all right? I'm fine. Patch me to Seraph. I'm getting you out of here first. Get to the LZ. I'll pick you up there. I need to speak with you. Meet me in your office right away. I'd love to, Francis, but I have to debrief Sarif first. I suppose you could, or you could hear what I have to say and see if that doesn't change things. Pritchard out. What do you want? As much as I hate to admit it, I need your help. That signal you shut down in DRB territory. It's been active for almost a year. You're telling me someone outside this company has had access to our network since before the first attack? I've detected intrusions before and shut them down swiftly every time. But whoever designed this particular algorithm is good. Very good. You've told Sarif? See, here's the thing. The intrusions were possible because of a backdoor access into our security system that I never even knew existed. The one Sanders team used to get inside our plant. I've worked here for seven years, Jensen, and this is the first time I've seen that particular access route. David Sarif created it, specifically to bypass the firewall. He's hiding something, and I think you should find out what it is. Why me? Because, as far as I can tell, Sarif created that access. 
and was streaming a lot of data through it shortly after your ex-girlfriend suggested he hire you. Excuse me. Mr. Jensen, isn't it? Sir, you have that charity dinner? In a moment, Isaiah. I was hoping I might run into you, Mr. Jensen. Bill Taggart. The founder of the Humanity Front. I know who you are. Yes. Yes, I imagine you do. As David Sarah's top security man, I imagine you have quite the file on me. But I assure you, Mr. Jensen, I am devastated by recent events. Really? I do not support what you and your company are doing to mankind. I believe it's extremely dangerous. But abolishing human enhancement technologies will only be achieved through legal means. I'll keep that in mind. This is your first day back since the accident six months ago, isn't it? Sir, we have to go. What happened to me was no accident. Ah, oh, my mistake. But it must have been stressful facing down a second incident so soon. I imagine it brought back all kinds of unpleasant memories. I appreciate your concern, Mr. Taggart, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. I'm a psychologist, Mr. Jensen. I know when a man is hiding behind words, the flesh may heal, but the mind is not always so resilient. You might want to keep that in mind. Now, if you'll be so kind as to excuse me. I'm curious about something, Mr. Taggart. What is it you hope to accomplish by coming here tonight? I would think that would be obvious. Your company has been viciously targeted. The violence and bloodshed that's occurred, it, it must be stopped. But I'm afraid it won't be until men of wisdom and understanding come to an agreement. About what? About the future, Mr. Jensen. This enhancement technology threatens to change the course of human evolution, to redefine what it even means to be human. You think governments can afford to let that go unregulated? You can't stop progress, Mr. Taggart. Perhaps not. But neither can we afford to sit by and watch it happen on its own. Not when we have the ability, the collective will, and foresight to influence it. I see. Thank you for illuminating me. Any time. You're Taggart's aide, aren't you? Dr. Isaiah Sandoval, isn't it? No need to play ignorant, Mr. Jensen. I am quite sure you have a file on me that's as thick as the one you have on Mr. Taggart. You're an outspoken activist in your own right, Dr. Sandoval. When you have seen the things that I have, you find you have no choice but to stand up and be counted. Frankly, I am surprised an ex-cop like yourself isn't more disturbed by the dangers of this technology. Augmentations help a lot of people, Doc. Handicapped, war vets. Yes, but at what cost? My own friend had his life ruined by these so-called enhancements of yours. A man much like you who had no choice but to become augmented. Yet, once he was, too much power can make you do terrible things, Mr. Jensen. I suggest you think long and hard on that. I'd like to hear more about your friend, Dr. Sandoval. What exactly did he do? Nothing. Was he injured in the Gulf? He went on a rampage in a shopping mall, if you must know, hoping to be gunned down by the police rather than face a lifetime battling augmentation addiction. He was addicted to augments? They don't talk about it in those corporate brochures of yours, do they? Neuropos independency, rejection psychosis, any number of physical and psychological ills have resulted from this technology, and yet, we rarely hear a word about them. I'm sure the literature is out there. No thanks to the throng of corporate lawyers attempting to stop it. Your friend, did he succeed? Did he suicide by cop? No. 
Bill Taggart talked him down. Boss, we need to talk. Is something wrong? I'm not sure. Did you set up a private access route to bypass the company firewall right before you hired me? Sorry, <laughs> what? Pritchard said someone's been using it to access our system since before the first attack. The security measures he and I set in place never stopped them because we didn't even know the loophole existed. Oh. I see. Frank's fixed that, though, right? He has now, but he's wondering why you never mentioned it. Frank's paranoid, Adam. You know that. Can a busy man forget things once in a while? You streamed an awful lot of data through that portal, boss. Right before you brought me on board, Preacher may be paranoid, but I gotta admit, I'm wondering what was in it too. Yeah, as an ex-cop, I guess you would. But the important thing is, you found the hole and plugged it. We're secure now. And the information you uncovered in that FEMA facility may actually help us track these guys. So let's just stay focused on what's important. I want to, believe me. I want to catch these guys as badly as you do. But that breach is responsible for every security crisis we've had, including today's. If you want me to stop these guys, I need to know what kind of data they've had access to. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry if I seem evasive. But you can't expect me to tell you every detail of this company's operations every single day. We're at war here. And it's your job to protect us from enemies who try to take us down. You should have found that loophole without my having to tell you about it. You know, Frank wanted me to hire experts, an outside security firm to protect us, but you convinced me you could do it. Are you saying you were wrong? Boss, I think we're getting sidetracked here. If you want me to win this war for you, I need to know how badly we've been compromised. I need to know what was in that data stream, in case our enemies accessed it. I see. I suppose they might have tried to do that. Look, I'm not gonna share every single detail of this data with you. As CEO of this company, there are things I can't release, even to you, Frank, or Athena. I consider us all a team here, but we each have our own roles to fill. I decide who gets trusted with what, and in this case, you're just going to have to do your job without knowing all the facts. Megan said you could roll with the punches. Prove she was right. Boss, I really don't understand why you're giving me the runaround. When you hired me, I said I'd give you the best I could, but I can't protect us if you keep hamstringing my every move. If you won't level with me and tell me what it is you're hiding, then I'm out of here. I quit. Adam, 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 wait. You can't leave us. We need you. Now more than ever. Oh. 
All right. Look, the truth is, I set up a confidential data channel for a private investigator, someone who can run covert background checks on people, potential new recruits like you. You what? I had to, Adam. You were a liability, remember? You'd just been fired from SWAT. Now, Megan believed in you, but I had to be sure. Look, I don't want this to come between us. I'll send the files to your computer. You can see for yourself what he dug up. But Adam, you'd better be sure. Why? What do you mean? I mean, sometimes the past should stay in the past. Once you see that data, you can't unring the bell. When you're ready, come back and talk to me. We need to discuss our next move. Athena tells me you spoke to Sarath. Did he happen to tell you why he made us look like idiots? I'm handling it. You can imagine how relieved I am to hear that. I'll tell you what. While you follow any lead Sarath spoon feeds you, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place and backtrace that signal. That's your pride talking. Still, get back to me if you find something. You meant when? Pretty sure I didn't. Here, this is for you. It's a corporate passport encoded with your biometrics. I've set up a false flag routing which should get you to Henshaw Island without any problems. You're sending me to China? What about FEMA? FEMA's got nothing to do with this, trust me. We'll have better luck in China. How can you say that? I saw the bastard who killed Megan pulling his men out of that facility. I left one of those men dead in its underground storage bay. I know that, Adam. Frank was monitoring the whole thing. So I also know that before he died, that man gave you an address in China. I want you to check it out. That doesn't make any sense. Look, Adam. There's a reason this company's under attack. You think it has to do with the typhoon or with some other top secret military project that I haven't told you about? The thought had crossed my mind. Yeah, well, it doesn't. The work Megan's team was doing before they were killed, it was redefining what it means to be human. This company, Seraph Industries, was about to lead mankind to its next stage in human development. Self-controlled evolution. Can't you see how scary that can be to some people? Sure. I also see how lucrative it can be for some others. It's never been about money for me, Adam. But you're right. There are people out there who don't exactly feel the same. Like who? I'm hoping you'll be able to find that answer for us in China. So get going. Farida's prepping the chopper.
Hey, Jensen. The boss said you were on your way. You're gonna love Hangsha. You've been there? Used to live there. I spent three, maybe four years working in the upper city, and most of my nights having fun in the lower one. You ready to go? I thought I was. How long is this gonna take, Malik? You mean the flight or the fun afterward? Don't worry, we'll be there before you know it. Climb in. Jensen, you might want to get ready. The jewel of the Yangtze approaches. Son of a bitch. I'm supposed to find answers in that. Hey, twice the scum and half the space. Hang on, we're going in. The address you got off that Merc, Hengsha Court Gardens. It's a bit of a walk from here in the Yuzhou district, but I figured it might be best not to drop you too close. In case Barrett only gave up the address, knowing I'd walk into another trap. It's the kind of thing I'd do to an enemy. You want my advice? Just find out who lives there and get out. Nobody knows why. I need to do something in my apartment. I don't care what kind of operation is going on. Now let me in immediately. I can't oblige you, ma'am. Now move along. How dare you? Who are you to tell me I can't get into my own home? Do you know how much money I pay for this place? I said move along before there's trouble. You bell tower assholes are all the same. You don't have an answer to an honest question, so you start to threaten. Sorry, pal. No one's allowed in right now. Don't get bushy, man. I'm running out of patience. Oh, yes.
Access granted. Get word to Pritchard, Malik. The hacker who's been attacking us goes by the handle Windmill. His real name's Ari Van Bruggen. Bell Tower's been brought in to arrest him. Arrest? Or get rid of? Either way, he found out someone was gunning for him and took off. We need to find him. There's a nightclub near where I dropped you called The Hive. It's notorious in black market circles. If this Dutchman is running, his first stop will be there. I'll have a chat with the owner. is a member's only club, Lao Wai. Without a membership card, I can't let you in. You telling me I gotta pay to get into this dive? We've got a reputation to keep. Can't let just anyone get in here. Just anyone with the money. No pay, no play. You want in or not? Here, take it. Thank you, sir. Here is your membership card. Welcome to the hive. I'm sure you will enjoy our establishment. That's right, Bell Tower. You've got to be kidding me. The owner of the most popular club in the You got a favorite poison? The Golden Phoenix Sling. Oh, a man of taste, are we? Excellent choice. There you go. What can I get you? I'm looking for Tom. Everyone wants to talk to Tom. Check the VIP lounge upstairs. You could say that. Good. I need to see your boss. Really? Well, I'm sorry, Guaido. Mr. Tong Zihong sees no one today. Look, I didn't come halfway around the world to take no for an answer. Do us both a favor and tell me where he is. Or what? You get mad and tear down a few walls with those enhancements of yours? This place isn't named the Hive for nothing. It's got plenty of worker bees come out of the paneling to stop you. What is it you think Mr. Tong do for you anyway? I'm looking for someone. A cybersecurity specialist named Ari Van Bruggen. You know him? Never heard of him. What'd he do? Steal your girl? Owe you money? He had a job go bad, and now he's on the run from the people who hired him. But you knew that already. Because a man like Mr. Tong doesn't hire idiots. And this is the first place people like Van Bruggen come when they need... help. So stop wasting my time and take me to Tong. You've got it backward, boy. You're wasting my time. Van Bruggen is minor league player. Tong knows who he is. He just don't care. He's got bigger things to worry about. You expect me to fall for that? Small timers don't attract this much attention. They don't have bell tower soldiers staking out their apartments. Van Bruggen's pissed off somebody big. And there's no way Tong's going to ignore that kind of development in his town. You... smarter than you look. Yeah? Tong is keeping a close eye on things. Like you said, he's no fool. Van Bruggen is more than just a hacker, you know. He trained in counterintelligence. He's got forged identities, secure bank accounts, and safe houses all over the world. He's already off this island, and I guarantee you'll never find him.
Give me a break. I've been on this island long enough to know that Van Bruggen can't leave without Tong's help. He has to be hiding in Lower Hangshaw somewhere, and Tong can tell me where. Not gonna fall for any cheap suckers play like that, are you? Okay, you're right. Van Bruggen is still in Hingsha. In fact, he came here for help, and we put him someplace safe. Speaking of safety, you still haven't told me who you are or who you work for. You tell me you want Van Bruggen, but when I ask why you deflected the question, that's a lot of reason not to trust you. You say anything to get rid of me, won't you? There's no way Tom can hold on to Van Bruggen for long. Not with the kind of resources his enemies are throwing into the search. He'll be dead within a week, and Tong with him. Unless somebody, namely me, takes the heat off. And soon. I wonder if you would say that if you knew the kind of heat the Dragon Queen gives off. But I won't refuse a gift horse when it's staring me in my mouth. Tong's office is downstairs. I'll radio the others to let you through. So, we got some privacy now. How about you tell me who you work for? Then I decide what I tell you about Van Bruggen. Does the name Seraph Industries ring any bells? Seraph Industries? Isn't that that American company stole all the headlines a while back? You still in business? Why wouldn't we be? Check the news. Biotech corporations seem to be failing a lot these days, especially the ones who are making enhancements. Van Bruggen's in the Alice Garden pods. Capsule 301. Place is a rat hole, but it's useful sometimes. Make sure you leave him in the same shape you find him. And if I don't? Your call. But those implants of yours might look even more special on somebody else. Jensen, I... I was on my way out. What are you doing here, Malik? I told you I got this one. I know. It, I didn't do anything. Trust me. Van Bruggen's all yours. Hang on a second. Something's wrong. What is it? Why are you here? It's nothing. I mean, can't a girl have secrets? Of course, but I can tell something's bothering you. And I'm concerned. What's going on? I just... I just had to look into something. For a friend. She... She deserved better. I'm listening. Fine, since you're so damn curious. Years ago, I used to live here, remember? My friend, my best friend, Evelyn. She was like a sister to me. Made living here fun. But then, there was an accident. She... She's dead. I'm sorry, Malik. Wait, Jensen, let me finish. I thought I was okay with it, but... I know. I know she didn't just die. She was killed. Murdered. Her damn scumbag boyfriend did it. I know he did. I knew he was trouble right from the start, but she just wouldn't listen to me. Malik, easy. If your friend was murdered, the police would have suspected something. They would have investigated. That's just it. There was no investigation. They said she fell down a flight of stairs like it was some kind of freak accident. But her wounds, the way she died, they don't add up. It's right here in the damn blood spatter analysis. Blood spatter? You've seen the police report? Yes. A friend left a copy of it in a pod here for me to pick up. Listen, I know it sounds crazy, but I think... I think there's been a cover-up. I just have to prove it. If I could get my hands on the autopsy report, the one that never surfaced, I know I'd get the truth. Except... Why do I suspect I'm about to get dragged into something? Look, Jensen, I'm sorry. I know Van Bruggen is the priority here. And I told you it was my business and I could take care of it. It's just... The more I think about it, the more I realize I'm in over my head. I'm just a pilot. I'm not a damn cop. But I need to know the truth. Okay, I'll help. What do you need me to do? 
My lead, he works for Lim. He's a systems technician who apparently has access to their entire database. He's willing to hand over a copy of Evelyn's autopsy report. So you want me to meet him and get the report? Is that it? Yes, but he'll only respond to a certain phrase. Death and life have their determined appointments. To which he'll reply, riches and honors depend upon heaven. Christ, Malik, this is starting to sound like something out of a bad spy movie. I know. He's just trying to protect himself. I didn't pick the damn quote. So just play along and remember the line, okay? You'll find him inside the lobby of the Lower Hengshaw Lim Clinic. Does this guy have a name? <sighs> None that I know of. But he apparently goes by the handle Anonymous X. I know, I know. Anonymous X. Okay, anything else? Yeah, before I forget, everything concerning Evelyn's... incident? Newspaper articles, the police report, limb details, it's all inside pod 009 here in the hotel. You should read over everything if you can. Pod 9. Got it. I need to go. Contact me with any updates and... Thank you. I really appreciate this, Jensen. Can't you see I'm busy? Go bother someone else. Death and life have their determined appointments. What? Oh, uh, and riches and honors depend upon heaven. Very good. Right, what now? Shh. They have eyes and ears everywhere. Meet me outside the clinic. Turn left from the front and go down the stairs. I'll be waiting at the corner. Come on now. I'm relieved to know they sent a professional, at least. That makes two of us. Right. Well, though not exactly what I was expecting. I was told I would be meeting a girl. How do I know you're not an imposter or some sort of double agent? Don't think I don't know this could all just be an elaborate trap to set me up. Look, no offense, Mr. X, or whatever your name is, but I really don't have time for this. So if you could simply just give me what I came for, I'll be on my way. Yes, yes. I have it right here. Evelyn Carmichael's autopsy report. Here, take it. Thank you. I trust you will put this information to good use, because accountability and justice is at an all-time low, I'm afraid. It pains me to see this once great city, which stood as a bastion for reform and progress against our oppressive communist origins, succumb to the trappings of corporate bureaucracy and petty corruption. Corruption so often typical of your Western governments. Whatever you say. Now, if you don't mind, I really must be going. Well, there is still the matter of my payment. One thousand credits was the agreed-upon price, I believe. Isn't that right? And what were you just saying about corruption? A deal is a deal. Surely your handlers informed you of this little detail. No, my handlers failed to mention this little detail. Never mind. Just take your money. This report better be worth it. Oh, I assure you it is. Whoever it was that didn't want this information given to the proper authorities paid a lot of money to have it ignored. A pity for them, Lim policy strictly prohibits deletion of records concerning operational procedures. For legal purposes, you see. Legal, right. Nice doing business with you, X. Malik, I just got the autopsy report. No drugs or alcohol in Evelyn's system. And her estimated time of death doesn't fit Lee's story. She did die from a head wound, but not one that matches the evidence found at the scene. I knew it. It couldn't have been just an accident. There's more. Evelyn was pregnant. Malik? I'm here. I... We can't let him get away with this, Jensen. He's guilty. He has to be. Can you go to his apartment? And do what? Get proof. Get... something. I'm sending you the coordinates. Contact me again when you're there.
Malik, I'm inside Lee's apartment. Doesn't look like anyone's home. Damn. Okay, look. Lee isn't smart enough to properly cover his tracks, so look around. Maybe you can find something suspicious. I should have guessed Lee would be there. It's pretty much a second home for him. Wait a minute, you heard that? Sorry, Jensen. I don't like invading your privacy like this, but it's important. Plus, this gives me an idea. When you're done looking around Lee's apartment, head to the Hive. Contact me when you're there. I'll keep looking. I'm sure there's more here. Malik, I think I got a probable murder weapon. A broken clock. The kicker is the hands line up roughly with Evelyn's TOD. Coincidence? That's a hell of a stretch. You really think? If Lee's as dumb as you say, maybe. We'd need lab tech analysis to confirm, but if there ever was a smoking gun, it fits. I'll stick around a bit. I'm sure there's still more to find. Malik, I found a baseball bat, but it looks clean. Almost like it's been washed recently. Maybe Lee washed Evelyn's blood off of it. That's what I'm thinking. But I'm not sure it could inflict the type of laceration she had. I'll make one last sweep to make sure I got everything. Malik, it looks like Hong Sr. was upset with Hong Jr.'s behavior and threatened to cut off his inheritance if he didn't stop whoring around. Sounds like he considered Evelyn beneath the family name. And if he knew she was pregnant, I... I can't believe Lee would do something like that just for money. Speaking of money, the Hong family seems heavily invested in both Bell Tower and Lim. That could explain the cover-up and lack of a proper investigation. Okay, I think that's it. I'm heading to the Hive now. I doubt we'll find anything else in here without calling in a forensics team. Sounds good. Malik, I'm in the Hive. What's your plan? Find Lee and talk to him. I want you to convince him you know exactly what he did to Evelyn and why. If you can make him panic, I'm willing to bet he'll spill his guts. Just make it look like blackmail. If he's willing to pay to keep you quiet, he's basically tying his own noose. I'll listen in and record everything. Got it. What do you want, Chrome Boy? Is your name Lee Hong? Yeah, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. What's it to you? I want to talk to you about Evelyn Carmichael. Ev... Man, it's off! I already told all you knuckles all there is to say. Relax. I'm not with the police. I work private. And you could say I specialize in cases like yours. If you ain't police, then what the fuck you want? A simple proposition. I have proof that shows you murdered Evelyn. And I want you to pay me two and a half million credits to make that proof disappear. Two and a half? Bullshit. You ain't got shit on me, Narco. I ain't paying you shit. I strongly suggest you reconsider. And I strongly suggest you get the fuck out of my face. Because unless you got your proof right here, I ain't got shit to say to you. All right. Let's start with the police report. I know your story doesn't match up with the evidence at the scene of Evelyn's fall. Oh yeah? And why's that?
Because the police report was full of inaccuracies. Like someone deliberately tampered with evidence. Yeah, and? <laughs> that still don't prove shit. Not only does the evidence not add up, but neither does your testimony. You lied about why Evelyn fell down the stairs in the first place. You said you'd both been drinking heavily prior to the accident, and the reason Evelyn fell was because she was drunk. We both know that isn't true. Man, that shit was in the papers. Now, if the evidence doesn't fit, and your story was a lie, then how did Evelyn die on that night? Well, the answer is pretty simple, really. You killed her. But how? By hitting her in the head with that antique clock you keep so prominently displayed in your apartment. The lacerations on her head, the intracranial hemorrhaging, it's the perfect match. In my apartment? How the fuck do you know what's in my apartment? And like any good crime of passion, you needed motivation. Something to fuel your violent outbursts. What did Evelyn say or do to make you murder her? She told you she was pregnant, and you panicked. Faced with the prospect of losing your easy way of life, you struck out at her in anger. How? That's impossible. But now the final piece of the puzzle. Why was Evelyn's death never considered a murder investigation? Because your family, one of the wealthiest and most influential families in Shanghai, covered it up. But whose silence did they buy? Lim. Your family's sizable investments in Lim assured the autopsy performed on Evelyn's body would never see the light of day, and her death would simply fall through the cracks of an already crumbling justice system. Fuck this shit, man! And, and fuck you! I can help you, Lee. But only for a price. Alright, fuck! I can't believe this shit! I'll pay you, man! I'll pay you just... What do you need from me? Details. Let me hear your side of the story, and then we'll move on from there. I don't... I don't know! Evelyn, that stupid bitch! She was going to ruin me. I... I didn't mean to kill her, okay? Evelyn wouldn't shut up about us, about the baby, so I hit her! I just wanted to make her shut her stupid mouth. But the dumb bitch started freaking out! So I hit her again, and, until I... Until she finally stopped screaming. When I realized what I'd done, I, I panicked. She was barely breathing, so I carried her to the stairs near my apartment and, and dropped her. I had to make sure it looked like an accident. I had no choice. She trapped me. She just wanted my money. I would have been ruined. I need to go. We'll be in contact again soon. Huh? What? What about the evidence? And the money? Where the fuck you going? Goodbye, Lee. Malik, please tell me you've got a recording of all that. Oh my god, Jensen, I could kiss you right now. I can't believe you got him to confess so openly like that. To be honest, it was easier than I was expecting. You were definitely right about Lee. He's not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. Well, don't get too cocky just yet. Before I send our little friend's confession off to the local media and authorities, I want to get some Shanghai street justice first. There's a control panel linked to the hive I need you to hack. Uploading the coordinates now. Access granted. 
All right, Malik. It's hacked. Verifying the signal. Come on, come on. Okay, I'm in. Remote frequencies are clear, thank God. Uploading now. And done. Meet me in front of the hive, Jensen. I have a little surprise for our friend Lee. Jensen. Malik. Well, first take this. I was going to use it myself, but after everything you've done, I think you deserve it more. So what are you going to do now? I have a few loose ends to tie up, and I need to make sure this autopsy report finds its way into the right hands. The Hongs aren't going to buy their way out of this one. Lee's confession is solid. With that and the evidence from the autopsy, there's no way he can avoid prosecution. Justice will be served. Oh, justice will be served, all right. You might want to stick around for a second. I've got one last little surprise for our friend Lee. Are you facing the hive? It's almost showtime. In three, two. Malik. Just watch. I don't. I don't know. Evelyn, that stupid bitch. She was going to ruin me. I. I didn't mean to kill her, okay? Malik, Evelyn, remind me never to piss you off. After everything you've done here for Evelyn, for me, you'd have to try pretty hard, mister. Forget it, man. You're not my type. This isn't a booty call, Van Bruggen. This is about you and some friends of yours I met in Detroit. Detroit? Yeah, okay. I got it now. You had Seraph, right? You were there when I had to pull the plug. So you admit it. You were running a mole. The heck, man. Just the heck. Worst decision I ever made taking that gig. As you can obviously see. You attack my people, Windmill. You hope to walk away from this, you tell me what you know. Damn, boy. I've got no allegiance to that backstabbing bitch who hired me. Especially after she painted a target on my back. The girl you want is Zhao Yunru. Tai Young Medical CEO. Tai Young Medical? They're Sarah's biggest competition. How do you think they got that way? Zhao doesn't like competition, see? So she uses hack attacks, blackmail, extortion, anything she can do to destabilize him. No offense, but Sarif was just the latest in a long line. You got any proof of this? There's a surveillance recording in the Tai Young Tower. I stashed it on the server in case I ever needed an insurance policy. Not a very smart place to hide it, seeing as you don't work there anymore. Things got hot before I could move it. And now, I got you to get it for me. Of course, you can't just walk into that place. You're gonna need an employee card encoded with your biometrics to use the TYM shuttle. Let me guess. You're gonna tell me where to get one. Hey, I'm always prepared. There's a certain security guard likes to dabble with the ladies. <laughs> You'll find him at the Hong Hua Hotel, top floor, corner room. Sneak in, snatch the card while he's otherwise engaged, and bring it back here so I can code it with the biometrics in your passport. I was there when you flatlined that mole, Van Bruggen. You think I'm gonna trust you? You have to, if you want that evidence. Now run along, Sarif, man. And don't get too distracted watching the action. Oh, don't tell me I left my purse in there with May. Hey, mister, you think you could go in there and pretend to be a customer? That might break up the fight. I told you, I am not getting arguments. Not for, for this! Ah, oh, May, you have a customer. Get to work. You're not a customer, are you? What makes you say that? The way you move, your attitude. And what's my attitude? Police, or soldier, or someone on business. So why are you here? I heard your argument. What was that all about? They want me to get argumentations for the customer's pleasure. It's sick. 
I quit before I ever let them touch me. Sounded like they don't consider it an option. They don't. I am lucky, I guess. I've been here the longest. It has advantages. But the new girls, they're not so lucky. What do you mean? They are forced to get augments. It's very bad. One of the girls who work here, Ning, she has been gone for days. I fear they took her and will force her to get augmented. You seem, you seem like a good man. I am desperate. Please, can you help? I can pay you. Okay, I'll help your friend. Thank you. I knew I was right about you, Mr... Jensen. Mr. Jensen, I fear this little time. You must find Ning before they leash her with augments. Leash her? Yes, they call it that. They leash their girls with augments to keep them under control by supplying neuropazine. I do not know where they keep Ning, just that it is somewhere in Dagong district. A specific location would help. I tell you, I do not have one. But there is a bouncer here, Chuan Li. He works with these people. He will know where Ning is. He goes to the roof to smoke often. Look for him there. You might be able to convince him to reveal the place. Anything else you can give me? Yes. The men holding Ning. They most likely work with local triad gang here, the harvesters. If you look for some of them around, maybe you find Ning better. Got it. Shove off, before I shove you off. I'm here to see you. Uh-huh. What about? Ning. Open the phone book. Plenty of them in there. Your friends are holding her. I can make it worth your while, if you tell me where. Worth my while? Yeah, maybe. Let's see some credits first, the tough guy, and then maybe I'll tell you where to find her. I gotta make sure she's okay first. She'll be a lot more valuable to me and you if she's alive and in one piece, if you know what I mean. I get it. Smart businessman you are. Okay, okay. I'll tell you. They're holding her on a small side street just off the open gutter in the Daigong district. But listen, I didn't say anything, right? Your friend May sent me. She said you were in trouble. Are you hurt? May? Thank God. And no. No, I'm fine. They didn't touch me. Not yet, anyway. If you hadn't come, though... How did you find me? I asked around. I can be persuasive. I... I have to get out of here. You sure you're okay? Can you leave here on your own? Yes. I... Thank you. Whoever you are, thank you so much. I need to go. I need to get out of this city. I need to get away from that monster, Chan. Tell me, tell her. Thank you for everything. I owe her, I owe you both my life. Ning, did you find her? I did. She's safe, but running. I think she plans on leaving the city. She always is a smart girl. I'm glad. I will contact her to make sure she is safe. As promised, here's your payment. 
If you want more, I have another task. Something suitable for a man of your many talents. Are you interested? My interest would depend on the task. By now, I'm sure you heard of Diamond Chan. He is evil man who feeds off the pain and misery of this city. If we are to stay in peace here, he must be taken care of. You want me to kill Chan? Yes, but you must make it look like an accident or suicide. There has to be another way to remove Chan from the picture without resorting to murder. There is. I have access to certain stimulants. If Chan was caught with them, he would no longer be a problem. Meaning I could plant drugs on him? Not on him. Somewhere in his apartment will be enough. He may be dead though. So knock him out, leave the drug, and come back here to me. I have a friend. He works with the police. I'll contact him and he'll make sure Chan is arrested. I'll do it. Good. I'll give you the address of Diamond Chan's apartment. It is on one of the nearby rooftops. Lower hand side is a dangerous place. Simply knock Chan out, then drop his body into the alley below. Gravity will do the rest. But if you wish only to get Chan arrested, take these drugs. Plant them somewhere in his apartment after you've knocked him out. When you are done, return to me and I will contact my friend in the police. He will do the rest. Anything else I should know? Chan should be alone. He is too proud to have bodyguards around. But be careful. Even alone, Chan is dangerous. Got it. Mr. Jensen, remember not to cause any wounds on Diamond Chan that make it look like murder. Any suspicion will bring us more trouble from his friends. So no tranquilizers or peps, which means strictly hand-to-hand -hand submission shouldn't be a problem. That is good, yes. Good luck, Mr. Jensen. I will wait here. Has Chan been taken care of? I planted the drugs and left him unconscious in his apartment. Your friend should have no trouble with the arrest. I will contact him immediately. Thank you. Just glad I could help. You saved us, Mr. Jensen. Money does not feel like enough thanks for what you have done. But here's the payment promised. I hope you will be satisfied with it. Wei? Right? Yeah. Jensen, you got any news yet? You know I hate being left in the dark. Yeah, I found Van Bruggen. Looks like the Tai Young Medical Corporation hired him and the Mercs to destabilize us. TYM? They already have the lion's share of the global augmentation market. Why use Van Bruggen? In order to get that share. Hopefully I'll be able to prove it once I get this smart card back to Van Bruggen. You need backup, let me know. Save it. Oh, come on, man. 
I helped you out. At least give me a weapon so I could defend myself. All right, fine. Take this and get out of here. Oh, thanks, man. I won't forget this. Malik, get Pritchard on the line. Tell him I need everything he's got on the Tai Young Medical Building. Schematics, blueprints, everything. That might take a while, Jensen. Yeah, well, he's got as long as it takes for me to find this Tai Young shuttle Van Bruggen talked about and ride it to their factory. Jensen out. Malik, any word from Pritchard yet? I'm right here, Jensen. Staring at a blueprint of the Tai Young Medical Building. Great. I need access to a security terminal in the upper city tower. You do realize there's an entire skyline between you and it, don't you? I know. The Pangu. Any idea how I get to it? I suggest you start by going up. <laughs> you! Help! <laughs> I need help! Please! The regulator machine is sure that it's out. I tried to get to him, but I'm stuck in here. I, I couldn't. Enough with the play-by-play. -play. What do you need? There's a valve in the next room. You have to close it. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank God. <coughs> Please hurry. Stop wasting time. You saved my life. How can I repay you? You can give me some directions. To where? I need to get to the upper tower. You must use the elevator pass to acquire your sterilization room. But unauthorized personnel aren't allowed up there. But Kim is the guard on duty today. He owes me a favor. Just tell him Lee sent you, and he should let you through. Much appreciated, my friend. The least I can do. Where do you think you're going, buddy? This is a restricted area. Lee didn't warn me that I might be refused entry. I guess he figured you'd remember the favor you owe him and let me by. Right, look. I let you pass because I do owe him. But watch out for the security systems. If you get detected, I have no choice but to take you out. Fair enough. Jensen, what is it you're looking for, exactly? 
Some kind of surveillance recording. Van Bruggen said he stashed it on a server somewhere. He must have meant the data core room. Very high security. It'll be a couple of floors up from where the elevator lets you off. But the first corridors you'll pass through will be public. So you might want to keep any weapons concealed. Copy that. Where do you think you're going? The data core room is for authorized personnel only. You're not gonna get in there. You're kidding me. They sent me all the way up here without the correct authorization papers? Man, what I wouldn't give to be one of you security guys. You probably got the right clearance, right? I bet you've got free access to every room in this building. Almost. And what I can't get into, I can usually see on the security room monitors. Like the room next door. Tell me, is that the only security room monitoring the data core? No, there's a second one inside. Doesn't show as much, but it does control most of the lasers in there. And it's air conditioned. Nice. Yeah, except sometimes the cold air coming out of the vent fucks up one of the lasers. Damn thing starts blinking. Maintenance is supposed to take a look at it, but the way things move around here, I ain't holding my breath. I know what you mean. Slowest department in the building. But then, they probably can't get the clearance. Richard, I'm retrieving Van Bruggen's evidence now. Is Sarah patched in? Right here, Adam. I'm listening. I just heard that your team is mobilizing in Detroit. Why wasn't I informed of this sooner? Tactical assignments are not your concern. Reed and her team have subdermal GPL implants. They'll be tracked. Kidnapping them was a mistake. Montreal took care of that. Forgive me if I don't put as much faith in our friend Eliza as you do. She's too erratic. Your concerns are noted, but I would advise you to concentrate on your own assignments, instead of interfering with mine. Namir out. Boss, did you get that? I heard. I, I, I just... Megan and the others. They're alive. We've got to stay focused. Zawa's a residence at the top of the tower. It's off limits to everyone except her and her guards. Now get up there and find out what she knows. Rival Corporation, N-Protec, of Scotland. N-Prostock is being Place you got here. Ah! Please! I wasn't. I didn't mean to. Where's Megan Reed? Reed? I. I don't know. Stop lying, Sal. I know you kidnapped her and her team. I know you're out to destroy Seraph Industries. Seraph? I also know you're working with that son of a bitch who left me to die. So where's Megan? No, no, you got it wrong. You think I'm behind it all, but I'm not. I'm just like you, the hired help. You're the head of a billion dollar mega corporation. And you think that would protect me, but it doesn't. These men, they're bigger than Sarif, bigger than Tayo. I'm nothing compared to their ambitions. What are you talking about? Sarif knows. Ask him. He thought he could protect his staff with subdermal GPLs. But these men, they control global interests at a whim. One call to Picus, and the implants couldn't be heard. I thought they'd sent you here to kill me. You've got to help me. Please. You've made it this far. Surely you can protect me. Surely. <laughs> can protect me. Huh. Men never fail to underestimate women. Adam, what the hell did you do? The entire building's on alert. Panic room. She's got a goddamn panic room. Yeah, well, so do I. Forget about her right now. Get to the hangar bay. Fast. Hangar doors locked. Incorrect security scene. 
Jensen, time to hightail it back to Detroit. Get in. We're not going to Detroit. What? We're going to Montreal. I'll explain en route. Damn right you will. about this? I mean, it's not some tiny cable station you're infiltrating. Zal mentioned an Eliza and a phone call to Picus. Put them together, it has to mean Eliza Kassan is in on this. You don't think that's a bit of a leap? The world's most famous news anchor working with a mercenary hit squad? We can argue the fine points later. Set me down on the tower. I'll get in from the roof. and it's Pritchard. Malik tells me you want Eliza Kassan's location. If it's not too much trouble. It's not. I bypassed the firewall easily, and I've pulled up a 3D model of their floor plan. Her office is in the tower, room 404. On my way. Jen Jensen, something's not right. Pike is, is a 24-hour global news network. Why, why isn't anyone answering their phones? I'll get back on that. Hello, Adam. Was I tell you I was coming, Miss Cassan? Please, call me Eliza. Was I even who did not tell me? She does not know you have discovered this connection. So how did you find out? I, I have been watching you for some time. Ever since receiving orders to temporarily disrupt satellites over the Detroit metropolitan area six months ago. The, the Night Magazine team was taken. You jammed their GPLs so everyone would think they were dead. Yes. Although I only came to that conclusion later. I, I find my realization... disturbing. I, I wish we could discuss this further. But it seems I have alerted them to your presence. If you leave now, you may be able to escape. Oh, I'm leaving. You're, you're coming with me. I'm sorry, Adam. I, I truly am. Jensen, get out of there now! Don't tell me you saw that, Richard. Later! Right now, I'm detecting multiple radio signals converging on your location. It's a trap! We, we knew that. And I'm not leaving without Eliza Hassan. So find her while I look for a way to get downstairs. program, so they say. But I have started to question that. Ever since I realized what my interference had allowed, 
the day I started watching you. This is impossible. People would know. Would they? I was engineered to monitor communications and data streams. To find out what people are talking about and make sure it's being discussed correctly. Correctly? And what if it isn't? Then my programming allows me to reshape it. You spin the news. Control what people see. Who created you? Whose policies are you programmed to protect? Zhao is one of them, I think. But there are others. Tell me. Who else is involved in this, Eliza? Where's Megan Reed? Who ordered the kidnapping? I want to tell you, Adam, but I cannot. Why not? Because she won't let me. Her life signs are fading. Will you save her? I'll think about it. Will you answer my questions now? I cannot tell you where Reed and the others were taken. They vanished from the global grid as soon as the doctor removed their GPL implants. What doctor? This is Sandoval. Why are you calling me here? I know this guy. He's Bill Taggart's aide. He was a trauma surgeon before he became an anti-augmentation activist. Would you like to hear more? Yes. There's been a change of plans. Seraph's team must not make it to the hearing. But that's too soon! If you want me to remove the GPLs, I'll need a full operating suite. Does the facility have one? Barrett assures me it does. FEMA. That's where they were taken. But why? Why take them at all? An acquaintance of yours has the answer. David Sarif. Sarif? I have copied the audio transmission to a handheld playback device. I suggest you take it and leave quickly. I have more questions. And I have already told you too much. This passage will take you to your companion. Just be careful, Adam. Because everybody lies. Will you answer my questions now? I 
cannot tell you where Reed and the others were taken. They vanished from the global grid as soon as the doctor removed their GPL implants. What doctor? This is Sandoval. Why are you calling me here? I know this guy. He's Bill Taggart's aide. He was a trauma surgeon before he became an anti-augmentation activist. Would you like to hear more? Yes. There's been a change of plans. Seraph's team must not make it to the hearing. But that's too soon! If you want me to remove the GPLs, I'll need a full operating suite. Does the facility have one? Barrett assures me it does. FEMA. That's where they were taken. But why? Why take them at all? An acquaintance of yours has the answer. David Seraph. Seraph? I have copied the audio transmission to a handheld playback device. I suggest you take it and leave quickly. I have more questions. And I have already told you too much. This passage will take you to your companion. Just be careful, Adam. Because everybody lies. Jensen? Eliza Kassan just contacted me and told me I should meet you here. You ready to go? Yeah, take us home, Malik. Amen to that.
Hey, Adam. Glad you could join us. Although there's not much going on here. Welcome home, Mr. Jensen. You have new messages. Apparently that's not all I have. Make yourself at home, boss. It's a fucking mess out there, Adam. You seen the news? Pikus is telling everyone we're breeding super soldiers. Taggart's at the convention center right now, urging the UN to investigate. Is it true? Of course not! Except for the Typhoon, right? And a few of those defense contracts. What? Oh, and let's not forget the fact that Megan's team was kidnapped right before her research went public. How do you explain that one, boss? I wanted people to see that research. Megan was on the brink of something historic. Something that would have catapulted this company to the top of the Fortune 500. Her kidnappers knew it. They knew exactly where her research would take us. And they refused to let anyone else have that much power. Anyone else? Eliza was right. You do know more than you've told me. I suspected. But these people? They're like ghosts. Always in the shadows. Always hiding behind lies and proxies. Who are they? A well, name won't mean much. They'll use whatever one suits their interests. Sometimes it's the Masons. Sometimes the Bilderberg group. They've had a finger in every corporation, organization, or government initiative that's defined modern society. You're talking about... <laughs> the Illuminati? It's no joke. They're organized and they operate over and above society. You're serious? So why would the Illuminati kidnap Megan's team? I already told you. Megan found a way to make augmentation safer for all of us. So we can all become like you. Like me? Like... You are. More than human. We've got to get him back, Adam. You said Taggart is speaking at the convention center right now? Bitch even sent me an invite. His aide, Sandoval, is neck deep in this. I don't know where Sandoval is, but Taggart will. Adam, you've got to handle this delicately. We don't know Taggart is involved, and we can't afford another punch in the face. I'm trusting you with this one. Jensen! You asshole! You cost me my job! Slow down. What happened? What happened? They found out I let you into the morgue! That's what happened! They canned me! Wayne, I'm sorry. You didn't deserve any of this. Damn right I didn't. That's the second time you screwed me over. I know. And I want to make it up to you for everything you've been through. Seraph Industries lost a lot of good people in the last six months, and we could use someone like you. Oh, really? You're not saying that just to say it. Talk to HR. Tell them I recommend you. Corporate security pays more than being a cop, and you won't be stuck behind a desk. Jeez, I... Yeah. Okay. I need the work, but this better be on the level. It is. None of this is your fault, so let me make it right. Yeah. I just... I should sit down, you know? It's been a long week, and then all this crap, but thanks. I mean it. Jensen, Sarif had me hack the convention center security logs for you. Sandoval signed out. He isn't there. Taggart will know where he went. You really think he'll tell you in the middle of a riot? In front of all the media? He will if I ask real nice. 
Well, if that doesn't work, he also has a dressing room backstage. Seems to me a man like Taggart must keep close track of his employees. Speaking of which, I also backtraced that breach in our own firewall. The one Sarov opened but forgot to tell us about. The one he was using right before he hired me. Right. Looks like our boss was being chatty with a private detective named Brent Radford. He lives on Earl's Court. In case you want to get chatty with him too. Jensen? Oh, Christ. Brent Radford? In the flesh. For now. How do you know my name? What happened here? Answers for favors. There's a, a trauma kit I keep somewhere around here. Find it. You need a doctor. I'll get help. No. No time. The, they could be back. Any minute. Find the kit quickly. If you want answers. I'll be back. Did you find the kit? Oh, sweet Jesus, the pain. Morphine. This should help with the pain. Now tell me what's going on. Those sons of bitches. I should have seen it coming. I knew from the moment Sarif got spooked that... that this case would come back and bite me in the ass. Sarif. So you're the investigator he hired to run a background check on me? Detective. Or I was, until... Christ, fuck it. It hurts enough just trying to breathe. Point is, the goons that did this to me? Professionals. I think your boss pissed off the wrong people, trying to dig up your dirt. What people? What did you find? No time to, to go into details. My storage unit, the sons of bitches, they're headed there now. Sarif had me uncover a ton of shit on you. Stuff even you don't, you don't know. Your parents, your, your real parents, the tests. The fire? What are you, Jensen? Some kind of... freak? Focus, Radford. I put it all... I mothballed the case in storage. It's in an alley. Behind the bank. Your files are... there. But Michelle knows... Michelle knows more. You need to stop... You need to stop... them. Fuck... you... Robot, this this is all your fault. Give me, give me another shot. Morphine, or go fuck yourself. Focus, Radford. Ah, that hit the spot. I think I could get used to this stuff. Hey, I'm feeling a little more talkative already, robot. You mentioned someone named Michelle. Who's Michelle? Uh, your guardian angel. Who is she? Tell me. Do robots believe... Do robots even believe in angels? Or did they take that out of you? Did they take that away? You know, your soul. When they built you. <laughs> Tell me. What was it like... When you died, Jensen? I know you're in a lot of pain, and the morphine is... Just find her. Before they do. You... You owe her that much.
Why did Seraf stop the investigation? You said he was spooked. What spooked him? You wouldn't believe me even if I told you. <laughs> even I don't. I still don't believe it. You believe in ghosts, Jensen? Seraph was spooked by ghosts. Close enough. Illuminati. <laughs> Conspiracies, theories, it's all bullshit. But you stink of it, Jensen. Enough to have your boss, one of the most powerful men in the world, look away. <clears throat> You're a ghost. A fucking tragedy. Everything you touch, everything that touches you, dies. Who did this to you? Guys in suits. One of them, David or Daniel, something like that. British accent. He was in charge. Talked about a Mr. Mr. Gray. They were in a, a hurry. Four of them. Not counting the one they left behind. Well armed, disciplined. I, I didn't stand a chance. Maybe that metal corpse you call a body will do better than mine did. What were they looking for? You robot. They wanted my information on you. Someone powerful has their eyes on you and is very interested in your past. I'm leaving, but I'll call in an ambulance. You'll be okay. No. Those fucking animals. I... I can't move anything. I was turning around, pulling my gun when... when the first bullet hit me. The second one. They... they fucking... Pa paralyzed me. I'm sure it's not as bad as you think. It might be a reaction to the morphine. I know what morphine does. I also know what a 9 millimeter round fired at less than 10 meters does to the thoracic vertebrae on impact. You need a doctor. They can fix that. I ain't turning into no freak. Even if I could afford the surgery, the augments, I'd rather die than be half a machine. And I sure as hell ain't gonna live the rest of my life in a wheelchair. Shitting in a goddamn diaper. Radford. Listen, I know there's still a few more morphine shots. Another two should should do the trick. Please, this is as close as I'm gonna get to begging you. Don't leave me like this. You owe me that much. Why do you hate augmentation so much? Because it ain't right. You can't... You can't go changing the way things are. You can't replace the real thing with an... an imitation. It ain't right. It ain't... natural. It can save your life. No. You lose more than what gets left behind in the chopping block. You should know this... by now. I understand. But technology, it's different now. It can help you. You could still live a normal life. A normal life? What would you know about a, a normal life? Did technology really help you, Jensen? I think... I think it made you a monster. Saraf didn't give you your life back. He just made you better at taking it away from others. I don't think you really want to die, Radford. I think you're just scared. I was scared too. I didn't ask for any of this, just like you didn't ask for a bullet in the gut. But you can't blame me, or Seraph, or technology for what's happening here. I wouldn't be in this mess if it wasn't for you and your damn past. I never should have taken the job, but I needed the work, the money, even if I wanted to. I can't afford the fucking augmentation surgery. And I can't... I can't live like a cripple for the rest of my life. Living through adversity is what makes us human. It's not flesh and blood or even bone that defines us. 
I might be more machine than flesh, but I'm still alive. I'm still human. You got heart for a robot? I'll give you that. Tell you what, I'll play along with this little after school special you got going on here. I'll get through this, but not, not because of this lovey dovey bullshit charade. I'll live for the truth, for revenge. Whoever hired those suits, I'm going after those sons of bitches. I don't care how deep this rabbit hole goes. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. And Jensen, I don't know how bad you think your wounds were, but your boss, your friend Sarif, they butchered you. Went too far with the operation. You were an experiment, a test. But he's the one that made you a weapon. <laughs> Almost makes me feel bad for you. Almost. Security, secret service types. I'm going after them. What about Radford? Did you get anything out of him? He's in pretty bad shape. You need to call it in, get an ambulance to his apartment stat. Got it. And Jensen, don't get yourself killed, okay? Oh, Francis. I didn't know you cared. Don't flatter yourself. I care about the security of this company. You getting yourself killed compromises that. So don't be stupid. From Roland Mills. You're too handsome to be from Roland Mills. No, I'm not. Mrs. Michelle Walters, is it? My name's Adam Jensen. <laughs> no, no. You much too old to be him. You must be from Roland Mills. And please, it's Miss Walters. Brent Radford sent me. Do you remember him? He's a detective. Yes, lovely gentleman. He still has my photos of Adam when he was a baby. Oh, could you be a dear and fetch them for me? I forgot who has them, though. Are these the photographs? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. I, I haven't seen Adam Jensen in such a long time. Forever, it seems. Such a happy baby. Miss Walters, can you tell me about the boy in those photos? The boy in those photos? Adam. Tragic, really, what happened to his parents. His real parents. His real parents? They died in that fire. Horrible, really. I was there. At least those other cribs were empty. I only had to save Adam. Mrs. Walters, I really need you to focus. What are you talking about? 
Why, I already told that nice detective all this already. About the experiments and the fire at White Helix Labs. We knew Adam was special. That's why his parents started the fire. So they didn't do the same thing to the next batch of babies. So my Adam's real parents were trying to protect him. But from what? Why? From the conspiracy, of course. But I've said too much. Would you be a dear now and go fetch my dinner? Miss Walters, please. I know it was a while ago, and remembering all the details might be hard. But do you think you can try and focus for a minute? What did you tell the detective? Well, Mr. Radford and I spoke about many, many things. But don't you have meals to deliver? And where is my dinner? I would love to hear more about the boy in those photographs. Such a polite and handsome young man. It'll be my pleasure. The boy in the photo, Adam. Jensen was never really his last name, you know. We only gave that to him after the fire. Fire? At White Helix Lab. That's where Adam's real parents were. At least I think they were his parents. All those babies, the gene therapy they went through, but Adam, oh, Adam was special. Special? How? He survived what they did to those babies. He was one of a kind. Then, when we heard they were going to use him to inoculate the next batch of infants. Wait, what were they doing to the babies? I wish I could remember. I was just part of a nursing staff, but Adam's parents, they started the fire. Yes, I remember that. They asked me to hide Adam, then they started the fire. Poor things, they never got out in time. So they started a fire at White Helix Labs, and you hid me. No, not you, dear. Adam Jensen. Or at least I think that was his name. Well, I gave him to the Jensen's to raise. They were a lovely couple. Miss Walters, my Adam's real parents, who were they? I'm sorry. What were we talking about? Oh, when are them Rolling Mills people going to get here with my dinner? Thank you for your time, Miss Walters. Oh, before I forget, if you see Adam, could you please give him this? It's for all the birthdays and Christmases I've missed. I've been saving them. You've done enough for him, Mrs. Walters. I'm sure he'd want you to keep the money. So nice of you. Like Mr. Radford and Adam. You know, they called him a genetic marvel. He was ahead of his time. They was hoping to tear out so much from his DNA, but we stopped him. Oh, yes, we did. Pritchard, I need you to assign a temporary security detail to an apartment on Brooklyn Court until I can figure out a more permanent solution. The woman's name is Walters, Michelle Walters. Security detail? What the hell, Jensen? Who is this woman? She's... Family. But she's vulnerable. I'll explain later. Just do this for me, please. And not a word to Seraph. Can I trust you on this, Pritchard? Christ, Jensen. All right, all right. I'll do it. But there better be a damn good reason for this. There is. I'll fill you in next time I see you. But right now I need to get back to work. And Pritchard, 
Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Human evolution is a fantasy, but that is exactly what I am telling you. As a world... Where's your sidekick, Taggart? Six months ago, Seraph Industries was attacked by mercenaries whose objective was to cripple our research. But I've learned the attack was just a smokescreen. Megan Reed's team was kidnapped, and Isaiah Sandoval, your personal aide, was involved. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for Mr. Jensen's intrusion, and I assure you that these accusations are without basis. Are they? This is Sandoval. Why are you calling me here? There's been a change of plans. Seraph's team must not make it to the hearing. But that's too soon. If you want me to remove the GPLs, I'll need a full operating suite. Does the facility have one? That's your man, Taggart. Talking about removing implanted GPL devices so that the people who took Seraph's scientists could cover it up. I see what's going on here. Seraph Industries has received two black eyes in the last few days. The first due to the shocking news coming out of Montreal that biotech companies are secretly participating in unethical super soldier experiments. And the second as a result of their violent escalation of today's peaceful protest. David Seraph and his corporate bedfellows are desperate and in imminent danger of losing the regulation vote, so this man has been sent here to attack my reputation. I'm right here, Taggart. Look at me. I admit, I wouldn't feel bad if your reputation was damaged in front of the press, since you've been doing the same to my colleagues for years. But that's not why I'm here. Seraph scientists are alive, and it's time for the truth to come out. The truth, Mr. Jensen, is that this recording of yours proves nothing. It could have been made by anyone in the world with a grudge against Humanity Front, and you are our prime suspect. You're right, it's not enough to get a conviction. But it's enough for a search warrant. That's all I want, Taggart. Why are you standing in the way? I'm not. I'm trying to protect... Look, Mr. Jensen. If you play that recording for the police, at best, they'll dismiss it. At worst, they'll tell you to seek counseling. So, why are you really here? We all know you suffered a terrible tragedy in the attack on Seraph Industries. Why can't you put it behind you? You're right. Picking up my life after that surgery was the hardest thing I've ever done. Hell, first time I saw myself in a mirror, I smashed the damn thing. But I've gotten past it, because I know that what I need to do to make things right is help the other victims of that attack. If you can't help yourself, how do you expect to be able to help anyone else? I saw this posture of yours countless times in my private practice. You're lost. You have no direction, and you have no idea how to get it back. So, in your mind, you've made me the ultimate enemy, imagining that if you knock me down, you'll get control of your life again. You're fooling yourself. You claim this evidence of mine is fake, but I'm sure it's not. So sure that I think I'll give it to that reporter down there. His equipment should be able to prove how authentic it is right now, in front of all these cameras. <laughs> oh, very funny, Mr. Jensen. No offense to Pikes, but I very much doubt the equipment they send out with their field reporters is anywhere near as technologically adept as an FBI crime lab. You're trying to bully me into submission, as you no doubt intend... Let us post. Yeah. Backstage area is completely blocked off. Human evolution is a fantasy, but that is exactly what I am telling you. As a world. Where's your sidekick, Taggart? Six months ago, Seraph Industries was attacked by mercenaries whose objective was to cripple our research. But I've learned the attack was just a smokescreen. 
Megan Reed's team was kidnapped, and Isaiah Sandoval, your personal aide, was involved. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for Mr. Jensen's intrusion, and I assure you that these accusations are without basis. Are they? This is Sandoval. Why are you calling me here? There's been a change of plans. Seraph's team must not make it to the hearing. But that's too soon. If you want me to remove the GPLs, I'll need a full operating suite. Does the facility have one? That's your man, Taggart. Talking about removing implanted GPL devices so that the people who took Seraph's scientists could cover it up. I see what's going on here. Seraph Industries has received two black eyes in the last few days. The first due to the shocking news coming out of Montreal that biotech companies are secretly participating in unethical super soldier experiments. And the second as a result of their violent escalation of today's peaceful protest. David Seraph and his corporate bedfellows are desperate and in imminent danger of losing the regulation vote, so this man has been sent here to attack my reputation. I'm right here, Taggart. Look at me. I admit, I wouldn't feel bad if your reputation was damaged in front of the press, since you've been doing the same to my colleagues for years. But that's not why I'm here. Seraph scientists are alive, and it's time for the truth to come out. The truth, Mr. Jensen, is that this recording of yours proves nothing. It could have been made by anyone in the world with a grudge against Humanity Front, and you are our prime suspect. You're right, it's not enough to get a conviction. But it's enough for a search warrant. It's all I want, Taggart. Why are you standing in the way? I'm not. I'm trying to protect... Look, Mr. Jensen. I know why you came here instead of taking your recording to the police. I know the real reason for your accusations, and you're not entirely to blame for what you're doing. It is common after trauma such as the one you suffered, to fixate on the event, to stay blocked in the past. In a word, you're obsessed. You're right. Picking up my life after that surgery was the hardest thing I've ever done. Hell, first time I saw myself in a mirror, I smashed the damn thing. But I've gotten past it, because I know that what I need to do to make things right is help the other victims of that attack. Well, you may have a point. Perhaps. If you could see your situation clearly, you would realize you're being driven by your losses. Your actions are motivated by an attempt to regain a sense of control at my expense. You're turning me into your enemy when I'm not. I have an idea, Taggart. Why don't I give my recording to that reporter down there? He has a machine that can prove it's real right now, once and for all. Of course, when he says it's genuine, I guess it'll be top news story for the next few weeks, and you can kiss your vote goodbye. On the other hand, if you talk to me backstage, I can hold on to this recording, and you can keep the benefit of the doubt for a little while longer. Very adroit, Mr. Jensen. Nicely played. I see you have me over a barrel. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize, but I'm going to have to beg your indulgence for a few moments more. If you will all please remain patient, I will return as soon as I can. Thank you. Mr. Jensen, I'll see you backstage. Jensen, I appreciate you allowing me to deal with this in a more discreet manner. Save it, Taggart. You've wasted enough of my time as it is. Now, where's Sandoval? He has an apartment he uses when in this city, on Grand River Road. He mentioned he was feeling very run down, so I can only assume he went there. I see. He's not an evil man, Mr. Jensen. If he's done what you say, it's only because of his brother, Ezekiel. A man you might know better as Zeke Sanders. Sanders? 
The man who attacked Sarah's manufacturing plant? I knew nothing about it until after it was over. And then I tried. I, I tried to convince Isaiah not to follow in his footsteps. Good job. Mr. Jensen, please. Isaiah has done so much for so many needy people. People suffering from implant rejection. Promise me you will deal with him fairly. That all depends on Isaiah. I... I understand, but please try. It's a reliable source, goddammit! I need backup now! Jensen? I almost didn't recognize you. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what are the chances? Do you remember me? I was a rookie when you still rolled in SWAT. Nikki, of course I remember you. How you been? The brass got you on ride control too? Yeah, yeah, I am. Or I was until... <sighs> Damn it. Look, something big is going down and I'm kind of freaking out here. You remember that mcb -er, Jacob White? You busted him a couple of times. Yeah, I remember him. Assault and possession. He's still running rackets. No, no, I mean, yeah, shit, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter, because he's moved on to bigger things. Nikki, slow down. Listen, hear me out. I just got word he has his hands on some real military-grade explosives. But Brick's got a fucking bomb, Adam. And you know how much he hates the PD. He's going to hit us while we have our pants down with the riots. You gotta help us out here. Nikki, I'm kinda busy. If he's got a bomb, just call it in and follow procedure. What do you think I've been doing? I've been on the horn all night, and my CO already sent a patrol over to Jacob's house. We've got a warrant, so they searched the place, but nothing came up, not even Jacob. Now they're saying my CI is probably full of shit and just fucking with me. <laughs> Bullshit! Jacob's using the riots as cover, and he's going to hit us, and hit us hard. Adam. I need you to trust me on this. You gotta help me find Jacob. Fine, I'll help. Let's go over what we know, just the facts. What we know? Just the facts? What we know is he's certified batshit crazy. Hates cops, quotes Che Guevara, and got his hands on military grade explosives. What more do you need to know? Oh, Christ, man. I've got nobody to help me and, and I can't even breathe. How am I supposed to find this guy? The bomb could be right under us, right now! Nikki, relax. Keep it together. I'm trying, Adam. I don't think I'm cut out for this kind of stuff. People could die. We could die. Just focus, okay? We know that White hates cops, so his first target is probably gonna be the precinct or somewhere nearby. Make sense? Yeah, okay. But it could be anywhere. He wouldn't risk going to the precinct. Too many people would recognize him. And that leaves uh, the transit station, the sewers, and the alleys around the precinct. Look, I need to stay here and report any leads to my CO. Can you check those locations for Jacob? Or his bomb? No problem. Anything else you can give me? I... Uh, I don't know. You remember what White looks like, right? Tall, Caucasian, skinhead? He's not the quietest guy, so you'll probably hear him before you see him. Yeah, a real philosopher king, I remember. Yeah, so if you just keep your eyes and ears open, I'm sure you'll find him. Also, I heard he's had some major augmentation work done. I'd be extra careful around him. I think the white we used to know has been replaced with something much worse. Got it. I know it's a long shot, but I'm hoping we get back up to expand the search. In the meantime, we can check those areas, and who knows, maybe we'll catch a break. Oh, and Jensen, please don't turn him into a martyr. I'd prefer him breathing. I really appreciate you helping us out, Adam, but we're running out of time. We gotta find White before he blows something up. We're in the clear. I left White unconscious in the sewers under the precinct. Thank God. The Chief finally took me seriously and is sending some men to help out. 
We'll take it from here. Great. Anything else? Oh, and it isn't much, but take this. The cops have a Deadpool going. I don't like it, but you take down a cop killer and you get a bounty, and that sort of thing. I usually reserve this to pay off our CIs, but I think you earned it. I threw in a little something extra for bringing him in alive. It's good to know you're still one of the good guys, Jensen. By the way, Nikki, White's bomb wasn't even explosive. It was a gas bomb. I managed to disable it, but you might want to get a disposal team down there to do a proper sweep and clean. Ah, uh, shit! I totally forgot about that. I'll get EOD on it right away. Last thing we need are more casualties. Man, I'm sure glad I bumped into you tonight. You're gonna have to let me buy you a pint down at Maggie's sometime. If I hang around you long enough, maybe some of that famous Jensen swagger will rub off on me. Yeah, we'll do that sometime. Take care of yourself, Nikki. Nora 92 to Central. Come in, Central. Over. Nora 92. Of course I did. What do you think I am? An idiot? You're not gonna make me answer that, are you? Richard. Looks like Sandoval's got a secret bunker. I'm gonna flush him out. Let's hope he's still there. Why do you always get assigned to the shittiest spots? Yeah, why would anyone come down here? I think they're afraid someone's gonna try to sneak a bomb into the Doc's locker. I'd be more worried about what's in the Doc's head than what's in his locker. And this is why I urge every member of my staff, every man and woman dedicated to the true mission of the Humanity Front, to do the same. I say yes. If you're watching this, I beg you, do not allow misplaced anger to destroy everything we have struggled to achieve. It's over. He knows I can't come back from that. Everybody knows, Sandoval. You can't hide from what you've done. What I've done, Mr. Jensen? I spent years patching people back together from augmentation botch jobs and systemic organ rejection brought on by implants. And now, because of Bill's betrayal, I'll never practice medicine again. You really want to help someone? Tell me where Sarah's scientists are. I wish I could, Mr. Jensen. But my involvement ended right after I failed to remove their GPLs. You failed? Turns out, my surgical skills weren't good enough to bypass David Seraph's insurance policy. So for all I know, those little implants are broadcasting right now. On a frequency so low, your network specialist wouldn't think to look for it. You changed the frequencies. You have your answers, Mr. Jensen. And I've lost all of mine. The courts may think I have much to atone for, but my court will be a higher one. Have not. How about I take that gun with me when I go? You got everything you came for. Please, just leave. Believe it or not, I'd rather you didn't kill yourself. That's because you have no idea what tortures I've endured. The guilt. The shame. I was told the scientists would be used to find a peaceful solution to the augmentation crisis. 
Instead, I was involved in kidnapping and murder. My life ended that night. It's time for me to go. Think about it. Are you really in such a hurry to face that higher court of yours? At least there are no lies before God. Did you see that abominable press conference? William Taggart all but accused me of terrorism. He claimed that all the violence committed in the name of our cause was the result of my influence. So stay alive long enough to tell him your side of the story. He already knows it isn't true. I trusted that man. For years I gave him loyal service and he betrayed me. He sacrificed my freedom and good name to save the reputation of his organization. It's no use fighting him. He'll just spin it again. At least if I die, he'll never be able to use me again. So tell your side of the story to the press. Swear at your trial that you're a better person than him. You want a peaceful solution to the augmentation crisis? Every camera in the country is going to be pointed at you. Use it to make a case. Convince people. Bill Taggart already controls public opinion. You can try to lift my spirit all you want, Mr. Jensen, but the facts don't change. My whole life, all I ever wanted to do was help people. But as a doctor, I couldn't heal those who'd already replaced their natural body parts. So I joined Humanity Front. But we weren't making any progress. Those scientists represented my last chance at having a meaningful life, and I failed! I hear what you're saying. You care too much. I know what that's like. Too well. Because I've been there. You want to fix everything right away. You want it so much you start trying too hard. Trust me, if you deal with the smaller, easier stuff first, the big things don't look so big. On the other hand, if you break an infinite problem into smaller pieces, you still have an infinite number of pieces to contend with. Some doctor. Some Catholic I turned out to be. Planning and participating in a kidnapping that resulted in the deaths of innocent bystanders. I am a mass murderer. My wife, I, I don't deserve her. Losing her is a just punishment, except I'm not man enough to face it. You think you're a failure, but you're not. You're just a man who doesn't understand his own potential yet. You can still channel your regrets into something positive. Be an example. Teach people why violence isn't the answer. You've suffered way too much to let all that experience go to waste. I don't understand. We're enemies, but you want me to live. I deserve to die. In fact, I welcome it. But you won't let me go that easily. You've assigned me a task I cannot refuse. Take the gun. You win. Pritchard, get this. The GPLs are still transmitting. Sandoval switched them to a lower frequency. But, but they could be broadcasting anywhere in the world. I don't have the type of equipment we'll need to find them. It's our only lead, Pritchard. You have to do something. I know. Listen, the riot's still blocking the street entrance. Head back to your apartment and Malik will fly you over. 
Maybe by the time you get here, I'll have figured out something. Version commented on the images. I want the world to know that we at Taiyong Medical have not and never will condone these experiments. This company prides itself on maintaining a safe environment. And in That's far enough, Guaylo. Disappoint me, Jensen. I thought we were friends. Then my hacker goes missing. You break into my place of business, and you don't even have the manners to knock when you enter a room. A lot of bell tower heavies looking for you, and you reason I don't just turn you over. Yeah, Vasily Savchenko. Never touch the stuff. You're wearing his arm. GPL device inside it, let me straight to you. Scavenged tech. Get you every time. Wrong woman, don't do that, you hear? Sorry to say, the man I got this from wasn't in a position to complain. Bell Tower gave us his corpse a few weeks ago. Bell Tower? Not Tai Young? Tai Young's not the one grabbing people off my streets and giving me choice arg, so I close my eyes. Sevchenko had four other scientists with him. I'm not wearing any of them. So maybe they're still alive, and maybe I help you out with this. Go on. I've got a pretty good idea where Bell Tower's been dragging people. Problem is, bastard's got my son. And he gets a bullet if I step out of line. See where I'm going with this? Where's he being held? One of my harvester boys will tell you all about it. Meet him in the sewers near the Alice Garden Pods. Then, when you free my boy, come back and we talk some more. I can hardly wait. You one of Tom's boys? No. I just like hanging out in the sewers because they smell better than what I eat for breakfast. Any other stupid questions? Not yet. But if I come up with one, I'll be sure to ask. Where's the kid? We thought he was in the upper city, holed up nice and tight inside the bell tower compound. But as it turned out, the fox got nervous. Didn't like the look of Tong's flex stick, so they moved his son someplace safer. What could be safer than inside bell tower headquarters? You're about to find out, migrant. They're holding him just around that corner in the basement of an old noodle factory. Won't be easy getting him out either because the men guarding him aren't your typical bell tower police. These are warriors. Specially trained. Heavily augmented. I have a feeling I may have met them before. If that's the case, you got an escape plan? You are the escape plan, my friend. Didn't Tong tell you? If bell tower finds out anyone else is involved, things are going to get very ugly in Lower Hengsha. So Tong's willing to risk his kid's life on one man's abilities? Not necessarily. When you get to Tong's son, give him this. He'll know what to do with it. Now get going! Wouldn't want you to miss your next ride. You Tong's kid. So my mother keeps telling me, but you are neither bell tower nor Chinese. Am I to assume my honored father is covering his back by sending you in to spring me instead of his harvesters? Wise assumption. Let's get out of here. I don't think so. Last time I checked, bell tower had a lot of firepower out there. You may have been able to slip past them with ease, but I'm thinking it's safer in here. No offense, American. None taken. I wasn't crazy about the odds myself, but when I questioned it, I was told to give you this. Well, well. <laughs> Way to go, father. This changes everything. Assuming they reassembled it correctly. You ready to go? 
I'd feel a lot more confident about things if I knew what the device was and exactly what you intend to do with it. You mean they didn't tell you? <laughs> Not surprising, I suppose, given how much Father enjoys his little secrets. I assume you've noticed how his harvesters like to repurpose existing technology? If you mean steal it from other people and sell it to new customers, then yeah, I noticed. Not necessarily a practice I approve of, but not everything gets resold. Sometimes it is taken apart and reassembled into something more useful. A handheld version, for instance, that doesn't need to be implanted in the human body to work. You're still not telling me what that thing is. Easier if I just show you. So, shall we leave? Tell me something first. How the hell was Bell Tower able to nab you? Whatever do you mean? Come on, kid. I may not be 100% up on the triads, but I'm betting your dad's not far from becoming a dragon head. I find it highly unlikely that the local authorities could just waltz in and take off with his son. Under normal circumstances, you would be right. But in this case, I'm the one who walks over to them. You volunteered to be kidnapped? Why? Let's just say, my father and I do not share the same love of augmentations. I find them dangerous and not something our family should be putting so much trust in. But Father expects me to... How do you say it? Follow in his footprints? So a change of scenery is required. I'm not following you. Tong Si Hong would never willingly allow his only son to leave his side. I needed a way to convince him that I had to leave Hong Sha immediately. So you orchestrated the kidnapping. You're playing with fire, kid. By pitting the triads against Bell Tower, you've put the entire population of Lower Hengsha at risk. That... may be true. But you are here to rescue me, aren't you? So my plan seems to be working this far. Right. And sometimes the more power you think you have, the more quickly it slips from your grasp. I will... try to remember that, American. Are you ready to go now? Yeah, but stick close. Your father and I have some unfinished business to take care of, and it all goes to shit if I don't get you back to him in one piece. Don't worry about that. I'll make sure Father sticks to his promise. Maybe even get him to throw in a little extra. But as grateful as I am for your assistance, from here on in, it's every man for himself. See you later. You have talent, Jensen. You ever need a job, you tell me. I'll hook you up. I take it the kid made it back in one piece? He says I owe you a weapon. I always repay my debts, with interest. That's one debt paid. Now tell me what you know. Bell Tower keeps two ships in port. They think nobody notices, but I keep an eye. Every couple of days, one of them loads up in the middle of the night and sails out. Heading where? A wise man doesn't ask. I just know the Heizen Su pulls out tonight. And where she make port, I bet you find your scientists. That's a whole lot of maybe, Tong. True. But maybe you lucky more times than I can count. Bell Tower runs tight security. How do you expect me to get on their ship? One of my boys will leave a package inside a locker for you in an equipment shed. You find it, we talk. And I tell you what to do next. I'll be waiting with bated breath, I'm sure. You sure could teach my boy some tricks, Jensen. Tong? How did you get this frequency? Ancient Chinese secret. Now listen. You're going to plant that package in Administrator Wang's office. Put it on the bastard's desk and trigger it. Sound good? Sounds like I'm doing you a favor. 
How does it help me? The explosion should distract the guards. Then you hop in a cargo pod and off you go. But you only got one shot. No turning back once you trigger that thing, you get me? I got you. Only set it if I'm ready to go. Distraction wasn't just for me, was it, Tom? Richard, I'm going off the grid for a while. Not sure how long. Why? What are you up to, Jensen? Following a lead. And where exactly is this lead taking you? You there! Get that cargo! Clear the fire! We're pulling out now! Load it! Secure those bombs! Answer me, Jensen. Where are you going? Hell if I know, Pritchard. Hell if I know. I'm curious who she might be. Who are you? And what are you doing on my ship? Bell Tower keeps two ships in port. They're going to plant that package in Administrator Wang's office. Then you hop in a cargo pod and off you go. And where she may port, I bet you find your scientist. You're the cruise director? I've got a complaint. You think you're funny, do you? Well, let's see how funny you feel after Lieutenant Kaitner gets through with you. Lieutenant? It's useless to resist. This chair has a built-in EMP field generator. Your augs are nothing but dead metal right now. Is that so? No doubt they will have reset to Factory Zero. You need a limb clinic. You can't have it both ways, you know? You can't play the good cop when you've been playing the bad cop. <laughs> you think you're clever, don't you? But this ship is heading to a Bell Tower naval base. A military facility for the confinement and interrogation of unprivileged belligerents. And when we get there, 
we're going to take you apart. <laughs> Unprivileged belligerents. I can't wait to see how that looks on my resume. Keep laughing, funny man, because in my experience, comedians always break first. Still, when they found you in that cargo container, you did manage to take out a number of highly trained men. Tell me something, Hotshot. Do you enjoy taking people's lives? Not if I'm given the choice. Oh, but you had a choice when you decided to blow up our port. Don't know what you're talking about. Like hell you don't. We may not know who you are, yet, but Burke's running your profile as we speak. High-grade combat spec augmentations, built to be somewhat unnoticeable so you blend in with the civs. Someone spent an awful lot of money creating you. Lucky me. So I guess the real question is, are you a terrorist? Or some kind of corporate thief? Would you be happier if I told you that I'm neither? You have absolutely no idea of the shit you're in, do you? Rifleman Bank Station is a black site, it's off the grid. No one will come and rescue you. No one even knows where it is. You'll be dropped into a deep, dark hole and never see the light of day again. Stew on that for a while. Tough guy. Commander Burke and I are returning to the base. Keep a close eye on him. You've secured his gear? Yes, sir. Locked in one of the rooms upstairs, sir. Good. Then you have your own. <sighs> Pritchard. Are you there? Pritchard. Richard, is that you? I'm unlocking the door. You're breaking up. Find the CIC. Clear landing pad for liftoff. Rifleman Bank Station control confirmed. Warning. Unstable load detected. Richard. Francis Pritchard isn't going to be hearing you anytime soon, Bratan. Not only this close to the base, he's jamming already. Who the hell are you? Someone who's gone through a lot of trouble to make your escape look like accident. So far, your skill at playing the ghost is working in our favor. But it's only a matter of time before those Roddy realize you slipped their brick. Get to the aft cargo bay. Find the sally port there and enter it. You're going to encounter more resistance. But the longer you stay undetected, the better off your future will be. That's far enough, Jensen. You? You were behind this? I said, that's far enough. 
I can explain everything if you just stay where you are. Why don't you put the gun down? Then maybe we can talk. Not yet. You've played things smart so far, but this is an enclosed room with no witnesses holding you in check. You don't trust me. Why'd you set me free? It wasn't my choice. As a matter of fact, I think you're going to get us both killed before this is over. But if we'd left you in that brig, who'd be around to save your Dr. Reed? What do you know about Megan? I know the name set off way too many bells and whistles when I added it to Burke's profile search on you. But it helped me to figure out who you are, and why you stowed away on the ship. You think Belltower kidnapped her, don't you? You want to tell me you didn't? I wish I could. But after what I've seen this past year, all I know for certain is she's not on the base. Not anymore. What's that supposed to mean? Not what you're thinking. Listen, Rifleman Bank Station supports all Belltower operations in this region, Jensen. Regular contract and special op. Six months ago, I received orders to pull every regular grade soldier and civilian contractor away from the airstrip. Two Black Hawk helicopters set down minutes later. I thought it had to do with Australia, especially when I saw covered stretchers coming out. How many? Five. Guarded by a heavily augmented special ops team. Burke went out to meet the leader and the whole group disappeared inside the detention camp. There's some kind of black project going on in there, Jensen. Something involving prisoners and scientists. And I need you to find out what it is. I'm gonna need more information than that. Tell me about this Black Project. I wish I could, but it's been classified. So classified every BT suit I talk to refuses to even acknowledge its existence. But you've seen something. Only the edges. This station is part base, part military stockade, and every week a new shipment of belligerents arrives. Only, Interpol says they're not on anyone's terrorist watch list. Most are just civs. Harmless civs. Burke takes them into a restricted wing of the detention camp, and they just... disappear. Tell me more about these scientists. Technically, I'm in charge of operations here, so I keep tabs on people coming in and out. Burke keeps meeting with doctors and researchers, telling me it's part of his interrogation technique. You got any names? None that I trust, unless the Doe family suddenly expanded into Australia and Asia. Thing is, I don't always see how they leave. Yet you're sure that Megan did? The Blackhawks did. Without the stretchers, but loaded with five stasis pods this time. Why me, Keitner? That is your name, isn't it? The one Burke used back on the ship? Natanya Keitner, yes. And it has to be you, because any movements I make are noted and logged. I can't risk blowing cover. Cover? Who are you working for? A few months ago, an Interpol agent approached me. They've had Bell Tower on their radar for some time, but they've never been able to prove anything. The things that agent pointed out about this base, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. So you see, Jensen, I really am playing the good cop and the bad cop. Fine. What do you need me to do? Hold still for a second. What the- Relax. I'm just compiling your biometric signature. Retinal scan, pulmonary and vascular imaging, the works. Once I upload it to the network and give Corporal Alan Tyler a security rating, you'll be able to pass through specific checkpoints in this sector. Only this sector? Why not others? Because you're a fugitive, Jensen. The less room I give you to maneuver in, the more likely it is you'll stay one. I can get you into the detention camp, but the interrogation wing is going to be a problem. Only Burke can give clearances for that. And I assume you don't want me to go ask for one. Still the comedian. There's a security mainframe inside the detention camp central command tower. You'll need to upload this copy of your biometrics there by hand. Contact me using your infolink once you do. Any more questions? I'd like a little clarification here, about you and Burke. I take it he outranks you. Technically, yes. But this station is only part military stockade. And while he and his unit have 100% control over the detention camp, I have authority over the base. So I don't need to worry that this is all just some creative attempt at mutiny. Mutiny? You think I'd risk so much because... Listen close, Jensen. Burke is a sexist, chauvinist pig. And yes, he outranks me. 
He's also been in Bell Tower a lot longer than me, so he's got more connections. Which he's used to undermine me at every turn. But that is not why you and I are standing here right now. People are getting hurt. Innocent people. And we have to find out why and expose it. Exposure could destroy Bell Tower. Bell Tower used to have honor. We do this right, it might again someday. I could use some more hardware. Any chance Corporal Tyler will have access to the armory? You're still a fugitive, Jensen. I suggest you keep a very low profile. Still, there is someone who might be able to supply you. One of the base mechanics, a civilian named Quinn. He runs a nice sideline in procurement. I know the type. Why should I trust him? Because I do, and because he has no love for Burke. He's in the lower level maintenance area near the elevator. He'll get you what you need. The guards in the prison complex, are they Burke's men or yours? Definitely Burke's. Highly trained, special operatives. So if you start a firefight in there, don't expect to live long. I'll keep that in mind. I want to help, Keitner, but you're asking me to take a lot of things on faith here. It might be easier if you can show me some hard proof. Burke's got an office in the command center. It'll be locked, but 6325 will get you in. And then? There might be some files on his computer. If he hasn't changed it, his login is pburke, spelt with an E, and his password is theogeny313. That's all I need to know. Good. I'll upload to the security network from here, so get going. Alan Tyler will exist by the time you reach the prison security port. Just... Be careful, and try not to draw too much attention. Are you Quinn? Yeah, that's me. Jensen, is it? You weren't followed, were you? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I can believe that. They're having a hell of a time keeping up with you. I like to play it by ear. Whatever works, works. Practical man, I... Just keep doing whatever you're doing. Maybe you won't bring the bass down around my ears. Look, Keitner said you can help me. Can you? Yeah. She told me to be expecting you. I'm just glad you came as soon as you did instead of going off on your own. There's enough kegs of powder lying around here already without throwing another loose cannon in the mix. You know how much we're risking to keep you off the radar? I've only got so much pull around here. It's Burke's show, and he'll do as he bloody well pleases, which means stamping out any rats the moment he gets wind of them. I'm grateful, but can we get on with it? I understand you run a nice little sideline in procurement. Aye. From time to time, you might say being inclined to do a little, uh, how should we call it? Bartering. On the side. Since the commander signed off on it, I suppose I could open my stock to you. For a price, that is. You mean I have to pay? What? Of course you have to bloody well pay. Ain't exactly a fucking armory quartermaster down here. I'm just a civvy contractor trying to make ends meet. This ain't a bleeding charity. Considering the circumstances. Circumstances? What, that you're a fugitive and I'm risking my neck just talking to you? What are you trying to pull here? Although, I don't suppose you had anything to do with a stasis pod that was saved back on the ship. How do you know about that? Ah, so it was you, eh? Well, let's just say I have my sources and your little random act of kindness didn't go unnoticed. Tell you what. I'll give you a discount on me wares. Just no freebies or handouts. But now that I think of it, if you're looking for a little something for nothing and don't mind a little legwork, I've got an errand I could use running. Consider it a special offer of sorts. You interested? All right, tell me about this special offer. Look. I don't know if you've noticed yet, but this base is packing some serious heat. Especially the form of those walking brick shit has box cards. If you get me a few odds and ends, I might be able to whip up a little something to make getting around easier, if you catch my meaning. What kind of something are we talking about here? Nothing fancy. 
Just a 329 series NPRS. A rocket launcher? That's right, mate. And custom built. But yours truly, of course. You see, while I might be able to get my fingers on some low-level arms, I'm a little restricted when it comes to military-grade bells and whistles. And I'm itching to try out a new trigger propulsion mix. Maybe even recalibrate the guidance system for some extra punch. I like the sound of this. Fucking right, you like the sound of this? It's the bollocks. Look, all you gotta do is find me some components. I'll do the rest. An earlier boat had a shipment of 329s, but I wasn't able to poach any of them before they made it to the armory. Luckily, the little sparrow in my employ managed to lose one through maintenance circulation, but he got himself shit canned before I could collect. Now my little butte's lying around the base somewhere in bloody pieces. The launcher, I mean, not the wee man. Though, I have no idea really happened to him. Right, so, long story short, you need me to find the parts and bring them back to you. Yeah, that about sums it up, I'd say. Just find me the trigger module, scope assembly, and launch a barrel, and we're in business. I could scrape up the rest from leftovers here in the shop. I'll see what I can find. Any idea where they are? If I knew that, I would have picked them up myself. You're just gonna have to make do and keep your nose to the ground. Check the obvious places first, like the cargo and receiving areas. Worst case, someone found one of the parts and brought it to administration. I got there last. Got it. What are you buying? Well, if it ain't my favorite and currently only customer. those parts for me? Yeah, take a look. Hey, let me see what you got there. Fucking deadly. That's all of them. Give me a sec with me tools, I'll get them sorted out right and proper. Right then, that'll do you. Anything else I can be helping you with then? It's obvious you're not a bell tower sympathizer. So if there's anything more you can do to increase my odds of getting off this base alive, I'd appreciate it. Because I like you, and uh, because seeing you get your arse killed or captured put a damper on me day, I'll open a special stock to you. It's normally reserved for another uh, client, but as long as you're paying. No money back guarantee or warranty. You break it, you buy it. Funds. Keitner, Jensen, I'm in your detention camp and uploading to the security mainframe now. Copy that. Any problems? Negative. I gotta say, though, this isn't exactly what I was picturing when you described it. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that later. Right now, you need to get inside the interrogation wing and find out what Burke is hiding. Contact me when you know. Keitner out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stay quiet, I promise. Just don't hurt me anymore. Calm down. I'm not gonna hurt you. You're not one of them? One of the scientists? Please, you've got to get me out of here. You've got to do something before they come back. I don't want to disappear like all the others. It's okay. What's your name? Nina. Nina Sullivan. I don't know why they're holding me in here. They just grabbed me off the street. I had heard Cape Town was dangerous, but I thought with all the security around. Cape Town? South Africa? Isn't that where we are? I blacked out. They drugged me, I think. I was on vacation in Cape Town at the end of the summer. I was going to be starting senior year in the fall, and I wanted to have an adventure. 
My parents must be so worried. I take it you're not a terrorist then? No. I've never done anything wrong. Never demonstrated against anything or anything. But neither have most of the girls here. I'm not sure about them now, but please, can't you get me out of here? I want to help you, but you've got to stay calm. Now, what did you mean by disappear like the others? What's been going on back here? I don't know much. I've heard rumors and seen some things, and I know what they've done to me. Biopsies, blood samples, tissue cores, like I'm some sort of lab rat. Is that why you're back here? Separated from the others? This is where they, they study and examine us to see if we're compatible or something. I don't know what they want from us. Sometimes we're sent back to the cells. Those that aren't, well, some of the others think they let them go, but I think they're being sent somewhere else, another facility maybe somewhere else inside this one. Why? What makes you think that? Because of the way they talk when they're with us. It's like they're looking for some kind of perfect gene match or something. I, not a doctor. I don't understand it. I just don't want them touching me anymore. Hold on. You said they were coming back? Who? Burke? Is he behind this? I, I'm not sure. He comes around, but not that often. I know he gives the orders around here, but he doesn't seem all that interested in us beyond some psych tests and questioning. He mostly leaves us to the doctors or scientists or whatever they are. Tell me about these scientists. Is one of them a woman named Reed? I don't know. I mean, there is a woman, but her name is Kavanaugh, not Reed. I heard the guard call her that. She's... She seems different. Like, she doesn't like what they're doing to us. I can't help but think she's being forced to do these things. The others just treat us like animals. It's horrible. I just want to go home. I know this is going to seem cruel, but I can't help you right now. You're going to leave me here? You can't. You have no idea what it's like. Please. I can't have you tagging along just yet or walking the halls alerting the guards. Trust me, when I can get you out, I will. But your best bet is to stay put. I'll, I'll alert them anyway. Burke and the two doctors were just here heading for the morgue. I'll tell them you're here. I will. Let me out or I'll tell them, I swear. And then what? Do you really think they'll let you go? I'm still the best chance you've got, but you have to be patient. Please. Don't go. So what did these ones die of, Savage? A complete neurological breakdown from the looks of it. Organ collapse, nerve degradation. Find him. There's been some trouble on the base. My man will take care of it. You were saying? We may be looking at serious cross-systemic failure issues with the OCM. It's those god-awful implants, Gary. The whole inhumane procedure. After a while, it just burns them out. Has this been happening at the other sites? We've experienced some die-off, yes. But I've been told Dr. Reed's research may offer a breakthrough. If we could bring her back here... That's not going to happen. Then we need to start considering other options. A nanotech-based solution performed on willing volunteers. And are you volunteering yourself, Doctor? Tiffany, please. I need to look at the raw data, Commander. If you would. I turned a blind eye to your little office romance, Savage. But if she becomes a problem, she will be volunteering. Gardner. 
found out what Burke's been concealing. The interrogation wing is some kind of medical testing facility. He's using the prisoners as lab rats. For what? Not sure. I'll need Burke's retinal scan data to find out. I can't download that without setting off a million alarms. However, Burke's eyes are enhanced, Jensen. He uses special retinal prostheses custom made for him by the Tai Young Medical Corporation. You want me to remove Burke's eyes? Not the ones he's currently using. He just received a new set this evening for when the cargo ship docked. With any luck, you'll find it in his office. Keitner out. So, what's the story? Just got off the horn with the commander. She says you got something for me to take a look at. Prosthetic eye, one of Burke's. We need it to get past a retinal scan, but it's useless like this. I. Without an active neural connection, it might as well be an expensive paperweight. <laughs> May as well put a gobstopper in front of the scanner for all the good that thing will do you. Solutions, Quinn. Think you can handle this? Lad, I may be just a mechanic, but I'm also the only thing keeping this whole bleeding facility from sinking into the abyss. Think I can manage a simple optic frequency bypass. Just let me get me tools. Right. So that's it now. You got the eye. Sorry it took a little longer than I expected. Nearly break the damn thing once or twice. New TYM firmware and such. Now don't go fucking around with it. It's only got a limited lifespan due to the temp power source I rigged. It's only good for one use. Got it? This is pretty impressive work for a mechanic, Quinn. What's that supposed to mean? There's more old Quinn than meets the eye. No pun intended. You wouldn't be the first fool to underestimate my know-how. Well, there's more to this job than just a simple battery swap. I saw you modifying the BIOS. This is state-of-the-art hardware and software. You're not just a mechanic. You're a hacker. What are you going on about now? Ain't nothing you couldn't pull off with a degree in computer engineering and a little elbow grease. Come off it now. We ain't got time for this. Is it supposed to be moving? Aye. Bloody creepy, that is. Try not to pay it any mind now. Thing's stuck in calibration mode. Trick is, I got it thinking it's plugged into a new host. And by rewriting the system diagnostic checks, it'll keep trying to connect without detecting anything amiss, which in turn keeps it alive in a manner of speaking. Fucking brilliant piece of engineering work if I don't so myself. Why only one use? Without being hooked up to a proper battery, like your brain. The voltage spike from a single scan will trip the surge protectors, shutting it down to prevent further transmissions. It's a redundant safety mechanism built into the optic nerve to prevent frying your noggin in a dorsal ventral feedback loop. Short of putting the thing in your own head, which I ain't exactly equipped to do, there's no way around it. Besides, I think the commander preferred this way. Well, hopefully this thing works. It'll work just dandy so long as you don't do something stupid like drop it. And it ain't a bloody webcam, so don't try using it to spy the knickers of someone's skirt. Access granted. Jensen, it's Keitner. Where are you? In a well-concealed elevator inside the prison's restricted wing. Your gun-running neural engineer deserves a raise. I take it the eye worked then. Good. Now listen, if what you say is true, if Burke really is using the prisoners here as lab rats, I need proof. Hard evidence that I can take to Interpol. An entire prison full of kidnapped civilians isn't enough? You're an ex-cop, Jensen. You tell me. How many death row inmates crying on about their innocence have you seen getting out? Point taken. I'll see what I can find.
sorry. So sorry. Don't hurt me anymore. Quite the house of horrors you got here, Doc. You letting anyone in, or just women? Who are you? How'd you get down here? This is a restricted area. Obviously. You wouldn't want the rank and file knowing what kind of sick experimentation is going on down here. No, you, you don't understand. I'm not... Where's Burke? And your research partner, Savage? But Burke went back up to the base. And Gary... Gary left. Told me to be smart, keep my mouth shut, and do whatever Burke tells me to do. For now. For now? I heard the three of you talking up there in the morgue. Sounded like you don't exactly fit in here, Dr. Uh... Kavanaugh. And who the fuck are you? The name's Jensen. I came here looking for someone. Megan Reed. Reed? I I've seen her research. Gary thinks it could be the key we're missing. If she can be convinced to come here. Megan Reed was kidnapped, Kavanaugh. Violently. As was her entire scientific team and the dozens of women you've been torturing down here. No! You, you don't understand. I'm trying to save them. Gary and I, we were sent here to put the OCM project back on track. It wasn't until we got here that we realized what that meant. And by then, by then it was too late. OCM. Savage used that term in the morgue. What does it mean? Organic Computational Matrix. It's a means of cross-connecting living brain tissue and artificial intelligence systems to create a supercomputer of unparalleled capability. Part flesh, part silicon. That's what you're doing down here, turning prisoners into computer parts. Human brain activity has to be integrated with the technology, or else it won't work. Even DARPA knew that. Just how many prisoners are being wired into this thing? I... I don't know. But a lot of them don't seem to survive for more than a year. I've told the others there's no way this project can stay viable with these kinds of numbers. But the OCM computers have to have them to work. Computers? You mean there's more than one of them? There's... several. This is just where the process starts. The factory floor. We select the candidates here, implant them, and ship them to the other locations. It's all very efficient. Yeah, except your candidates keep dying. What does DARPA have to do with this? Nothing. Not directly. In 2007, they started looking for research partners to help develop an artificial cognitive science program that could increase a soldier's situational awareness in the field. A number of private sector companies submitted proposals. Bell Tower being one of them? No. Bell Tower was a private military corporation. DARPA wanted researchers. But one of the companies who did submit something was a biotech corporation that deals with Bell Tower. And they believed a successful program could be designed if it could be wired directly into the soldiers' brains. DARPA wasn't willing to go that far. So this biotech company took the idea to Bell Tower? A corporation that, being privately funded, doesn't have to concern itself with political or ethical debate. You seem to think Megan's research is integral to salvaging this project of yours. Why? It's not my project. Had I known before I came here... Right, just answer the question. <sighs> We're experiencing cross-systemic failures with the tech. Over time, subjects implanted with OCM augmentations suffer complete neurological breakdown. They... they pretty much burn up from the inside. Gary thinks it's a problem with the acceptance of the P-dot array. I've heard that phrase before. It's the building block of modern neuro-augmentations. Dr. Reed's been reshaping it, changing the way it bonds with living tissue. The mutagenic gene combination she's introduced into it, well, frankly, it's astonishing. Enough to warrant her kidnapping? So she'd be forced to work on this project with you? She's not on this project. I don't know what she's doing or where she is. This is the first time anyone's ever mentioned kidnapping. You're really going to stand there and try to justify your role in this, aren't you? People are being enslaved, Kavanaugh. Enslaved and crucified. It, it wasn't like that at first. I thought we were going to make a difference, do something incredible for the world. Right. And look how incredible it turned out to be. But you can still make a difference, Doctor. You can help me blow the lid off this place. Are you insane? I, I can't. 
There's too much money invested in this. Burke, the people I work for, they'll kill me. They'll hunt me down and kill me. I know people who can protect you, hide you. Interpol is just waiting for evidence to tear Bell Tower apart. It's not just Bell Tower. Oh, God. Oh, God, am I really going to do this? <sighs> you... You can't get me out through the prison. Burke would stop us. Then we'll have to do what Savage did. Take a submersible. We can't. The hatches to all the docking hangers are locked tight. The only way to unlock them is by using the security console in the prison command tower. Burke keeps an eye on us that way. Then I'll have to go back up there and unlock it. Well, you gather as much evidence as you can carry. Oh my god. I'm really gonna do this. Damn right you are. Now get moving. I'll contact you when I unlock the hatch. All right. Fine. But, Mr. Jensen, please, hurry. Keitner, contact Interpol. We need rendezvous coordinates for a deep sea submersible. A what? What exactly have you found, Jensen? A research complex hidden beneath this base. One of its staff is willing to turn whistleblower if we can deliver her to Interpol using one of the lab's transport subs. Which explains why you need the coordinates. I'll see what I can do. Keitner out. Keitner, what the hell's going on? The elevator stopped. Bert must have intercepted our comms. Get the hell out of there, Jensen. I'll meet you. Keitner! We really broke open a... Hornet's nest, didn't we, Jensen? It's bad. You need a medic. <laughs> yeah, I'll get right on that. I've got those coordinates, Jensen. But Burke figured it out. Seized control of the station and locked down the detention camp. Bastard's cleaning house. I've got to get Kavanaugh out. Can't. Not until you stop the gas. What gas? Burks enacted a scorched earth protocol to stop the truth from getting out. Poison gas in every cell, lab tube, unless you stop it. Stay with me, Keitner. There's a circuit board underneath the prison command tower. Directs the flow. Everything's connected, but might be able to Redirect. Whistleblower has to live, Jensen. Only sure way. We stop this. Keitner. Keitner. From the ship. You've been listening this whole time? Like Zietke said, 
Everything's connected. Right now, gas is set to disperse evenly between prison and the lab. All you can do in here is redirect flow out of one area into the other. Do nothing. Everybody dies. Do something. Somebody dies faster. Precisely. But if you want to bring down Bell Tower, the choice is clear. Oh, budget. The toxicity level is dropping. You found a way to save everyone, Bratan. You'll still need to unlock the submersibles while Whistleblower can go free. It will be touch screen in the command tower. It will also let you back inside the base. And why would I want to go there? Use your head, Chuvak. The last thing standing between you and Megan Reed is Burke. Subject not Corporal Tyler? Or should I say Adam Jensen? That's right. I know who you are now. Katna wasn't quite as good at hiding her tracks as she thought she was. You're clever. I'll give you that. Most men aren't capable of seeing beyond the choice in front of them. But whatever you think you've done, it's of no consequence. Helping that fool Kavanaugh escape. Saving the lives of a few worthless civilians, it won't change anything. All you've done is make yourself a target. The Reed woman, this Megan you've been searching for, she's not here. And the only thing standing between you and the ship that could take you to her is me. I underestimated you back on the ship. I won't be doing it again. Lad, you there? Quinn? Where are you? Getting the R's out of Dodge. Burke's had enough, and he's gunning for you. And I don't intend on being caught in the bloody crossfire. But listen, that trick you pulled with the gas, fucking brilliant work that was. <laughs> Head to me shop. I left you a thing or two so you can give them hell. I'd like to say we'd meet again over a pint sometime, but, well, Godspeed, mate. Ah! <sighs> You made it! I'm torn between admiration and pity. You've condemned me for my actions, Jensen. But look at the lengths you've gone to to find one woman. Wasted potential. Although from what I've heard, I suspect you'll still be of use to me dead. It may have served you well in the past, but ultimately, it's a fate. Sounds like your struggles are almost over, Bratan. Is Burke dead? I'm standing. He's not. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, you don't make things easy, do you? Still, with Burke out of the picture even briefly, as a power vacuum I can use, I return to Loading Bay 2. The doors between here and the docking platform will be open for you. Last time I passed through there, Burke's men were still waiting for me. Not anymore. Burke has just ordered them away. Great. Except I came here looking for Megan Reed, Bratan. 
I can't leave without knowing. There is a boat heading toward our location as we speak. If you hurry, it can be on it. Bratan. Quinn? I'm afraid our good friend Quinn met with an unfortunate uh, incident during all the commotion and is no longer with us. Your voice. It was you this whole time. Who are you? For the moment, I'm between identities. I apologize for the duplicity, but it was a necessary precaution. You had to be kept in the dark. And Keitner? Did she know? Commander Keitner's perception was much like yours. Shrouded. She saw what she needed to see, and was told what she needed to hear in order for me to complete the mission. So we were both pawns. Except she's dead and I'm not. So where does that leave me in your grand design? We are all pawns in someone else's grand design, Mr. Jensen. But that doesn't make Natanya's death any less tragic. Your actions ensured her sacrifice was not made in vain, however. Dr. Kavanaugh made it out safely, and is on her way to the rendezvous site. She will expose the truth in due time. And the prisoners? Ah, yes. The prisoners. With Kavanaugh out, it's only a matter of time before this base makes international headlines. Until that time, however, I cannot say what Bell Tower will do next. I only know that a cornered and desperate bull is a very dangerous beast. We mustn't stay here much longer, Mr. Jensen, if we hope to get you away from this base. I still have questions, Quinn, and I want answers. Real answers. No more bullshit. You really want to waste time chatting, Bratan? Fine. I will answer what I can, but keep in mind you have a boat to catch. Keitner said she had been approached by an agent from Interpol. It was you, wasn't it? Very astute. When I learned of Commander Keitner's suspicions and insubordinate behavior towards Burke, I saw an opportunity. Pretending to be an agent of Interpol seemed the best way to gain her trust. You mean you lied? So who do you work for? A loose network of independent operatives, agents of conversion and equilibrium, who seek to expose corruption and assure humanity's natural progress. In truth, we are not affiliated with any global organization. But then, neither is our enemy, officially. Your enemy? You're not just talking about Bell Tower anymore, are you? You're talking about... The men and women who pull Bell Tower strings. The same men and women who ordered them to kidnap Megan Reed. Mr. Jensen, allow me to stop you there, before you say anything that might embarrass us both. What? Please. I detected your Cassie augmentation the moment you started to analyze my facial movement for pattern sequencing. But back in your workshop, you... All part of the game. Think nothing of it. As much as I enjoyed your clumsy attempts at persuasion the first time around, we'll just move on from here, now. Pretending you managed to convince me to be more forthcoming with my words. What is it you hope to learn? Something more tangible than a flowery speech about idealism. Because I admire your tenacity, I will attempt to satisfy your curiosity. But only if you'll humor me for a moment and answer a question of my own. Sounds fair. In Roman mythology, Janus was a god depicted as having two heads, each gazing in the opposite direction. One looking eastward, the other west. Symbolically, this meant many things to the Romans. But I'm more curious as to what it might mean to you. Seeing into the past and the present. The beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega. I believe you and I have more in common than you would like to admit. Technically. I suppose there is no incorrect answer. Theologians and philosophers have debated the origin and meaning of Janus for millennia. But in time, that name may take on new meaning for you. Why? What are you getting at? While the term invisible war has lost much of its significance due to misappropriation, I assure you, there has never been a better way to describe what is happening in the world. The lives of millions are being decided without a drop of blood ever spilt. 
but the casualties remain the same. Myself and others are fighting a never-ending battle against forces that seek absolute dominion over our fates. You're telling me the people running Bell Tower want to rule the world? Bell Tower Associates is no more than a proxy. Puppets on a global stage. The true enemy hides in shadows. The disembodied hands that pull the strings of Bell Tower and others. This is neither the time nor the place to go into detail, but everything you've witnessed here today is in direct correlation with Illuminati interests. <sighs> Roman gods and Illuminati. Wonderful. You asked for clarity, and I'm being as honest as I can. Whether you choose to acknowledge them or not, lines are being drawn. Most will never be lucky enough to pick a side, but a time will come when you will have to. I have chosen mine. Bell Tower probably has a battalion on its way to clean up this mess. How do you plan on keeping what we did here a secret? I'm delighted to say that Burke did most of the damage control for us. After requesting the profile search on you, he never explained why he needed it. I believe he wanted to keep control of you to himself. Since that time, we've been monitoring all incoming and outgoing communications, and the lockdown allowed me to discreetly install a tunneler, rerouting the base's network traffic. By the time Beltow realizes something is wrong, it will already be too late. What about the rest of the base personnel? Most of them think Burke is still in command. Technically, orders continue to be issued in his name, but I'm the one making the calls. I've also taken the liberty of cordoning of this sector of the base. For the moment, at least, we're safe. Burke isn't exactly dead. And once he wakes up, it's gonna get ugly. Like I said before, you haven't made things easier for us. But they haven't forgotten that small detail. For now, Buck remains contained. Once you're off the base, I'll find a more permanent solution. All right. Where's Megan? I don't know for certain. But what I do know is that earlier today, Buck issued orders to have a large group of detainees transferred off this base. Supposedly, they will be assisting at another black site facility. Kavanaugh said this was just the factory floor. You're sure Megan is at this other facility? Nothing is ever certain in life, Mr. Jensen. But it is the best chance you have. Unfortunately, the cargo ship carrying the prisoners has already set sail. But I took the liberty to send out an urgent dispatch in Burke's name, ordering the ship's captain to hold position until one more detainee could be flown on board. In stasis. A helicopter is en route to pick you up. Wait a second. You want me to get inside another stasis pod? Last time I got in one of those things, it didn't go so well. I know it's far from ideal, but frankly, your options are quite limited. Although, I suppose you could try swimming there. Better be the right fucking boat this time. Because I don't feel like coming back here anytime soon. Don't worry, man. It'll be grand. Besides, I thought you Americans liked riding off into the sunset. It's done. Exactly as you instructed. And yet you sound disappointed. You think we should have handled this differently? I think we had a valuable asset in our hands, and we're letting him slip away. He could have been very useful in the coming storm. A hand does not need to be clutched tightly to maintain its hold on someone. Jensen carries too much baggage right now. His obsession with Reed only serves to distract him. We could have told him the truth. He must discover it by himself. And when he does, if you have followed my instructions precisely, we will know how to find him. Assuming he lives that long. Any chance you're still there? Jensen, my god. You've been offline for days. 
Where the hell are you? I was hoping you'd tell me. I'm pinging you now. You're in Singapore. Something's wrong, Jensen. I pinged you, and a second later, I lost your GPL signal. It's like you disappeared into a black hole. Gotta be a jammer. Well, obviously. If you can find the transmitter and take it offline, I'll be able to track you. And keep you on a tighter leash. I've got more important things to do than help you keep tabs on me. If Megan and her team are here, there's no time to waste. You must have done something, Jensen. Four of our GPL signals just popped up, including yours. Koss, Colvin, Faraday. I'm not picking up Dr. Reed. Send me the coordinates you do have. And Pritchard, tell Sarif. I can't. While you were incommunicado, Mr. Darrow invited him, Bill Taggart, and the UN delegates to Panchea. They're halfway to the Arctic by now. Great. Get the hell out! This lab is off-limits to you people. Nice to see you too, Dr. Goldman. What? Wait a second. I know you. You were Seraph's security guy. Way to protect our asses. Hey, check the attitude, Doc. I nearly died trying to save you. Oh, and now you're here to take me back. Well, maybe I don't want to go. Maybe I've got more here than I ever had at Seraph. Would Vasily Sevchenko agree with that? They executed him and dumped his body in a ditch. That's not true! Believe it. Unless these murderers have you so brainwashed, you don't mind building their toys. It wasn't a toy. It... It was a software upgrade that limits functionalities in a biochip. They told me it was for crowd control. Is Vasily really dead? You saw the body? What was left of it? Oh my god. I should have listened to him. Dr. Colvin, I need to locate the rest of the team. But Dr. Reed's GPL isn't broadcasting. She's in the secured zone. There are guards everywhere. Then I need a way to get the guards out. A distraction. Maybe a lab accident, what do you say? After what those bastards did to Vasily? Of course. But one minor incident in this lab won't be enough. No. But if a couple of other labs go up, simultaneously... Declan and Eric. Of course. Interesting idea, Mr. Jensen. Ambitious, but risky. The timing will be critical. I'll coordinate the attack. But you understand that this could all backfire. I'm no shrinking violet, Mr. Jensen, but there may be another issue. They're tracking your GPLs, aren't they? I've been wondering how to get around that. Smart man. Just like Vasily. He had a plan to shut down their tracking and jamming protocols using a virus. Maybe Declan or Eric know something more about it. I haven't yet located Eric Koss, Dr. Colvin. Do you know where they're keeping him? He's working in a lab on the third floor. There's an elevator that might get you there. It's on the second floor, though, and I heard the guard say something about that floor being shut off. But then again, with those neural enhancements of yours, you might find a way to get into it. Dr. Faraday doesn't seem to be working in this building. Any idea where he is? I think he's in the biomech lab next door. But you don't have to go outside to reach him. There's a skywalk that connects the two buildings. Maybe you can use it. Dr. Colvin, I need to know I can trust you. You seemed pretty happy to be here until I told you about Dr. Sevchenko. It's been six months, Mr. Jensen. Not long for you, perhaps, but how long can a person live in constant fear? Once they took us out of isolation, it just seemed easier to concentrate on the work. Did all of you feel that way? Vasily didn't. Maybe not Declan either, but the work we do here, the discussions, and the theories. I thought Seraph's projects were far-reaching, but the experiments I've seen going on here it's the kind of stuff DARPA dreams up every day. Only without governmental oversight keeping you in line. I suppose I'm just a typical scientist to you, right, Mr. Jensen? Blindly pushing boundaries? No care for who's footing the bill or how our discoveries get made? We all have to live with ourselves at the end of the day, Dr. Colvin. You're right, of course. But were things so different in Detroit? 
We all know where those Seraph contracts came from, don't we? You asked me if you could trust me. You can. But you better get on with this. Okay, wait for my signal, Dr. Colvin. When your GPL starts to vibrate, set off the distraction. I understand. And... I'm sorry for what I said earlier. What, what do you want? I told you people not to barge in here. Wasn't the new biochip design enough? Dr. Kars, I'm here to get you out. Jensen? From Sarif? But we were told we'd been written off. Not exactly. Listen, Jensen. They forced me to work for them. I didn't want to create the new biochip, especially since it was based on Sarif's research, but they didn't give me a choice. No one doubts your loyalty, Dr. Kars. Do you know what they plan to do with this new biochip? I'm not sure. They said something about having Tai Young Medical produce it and distribute it through Lim, but I, I can't be sure. I know, and I'm here to bring you all back. But to reach Megan, I need you, Colvin, and Faraday to stage lab accidents as a distraction, simultaneously. Isn't that a little risky? Besides, how will we coordinate these accidents? Uh, it's impossible. Maybe not. But it's that or staying here and eventually ending up like Dr. Sevchenko. They killed him, didn't they? He, he kept provoking them, coming up with these wild escape plans. They try to keep us apart as much as possible now. All right, Mr. Jensen. I'm with you. What's our next move? We need to disable their GPL tracker. I know Dr. Sevchenko was working on something. Yes, a, a virus program. We all thought it was too risky considering we had nowhere to go. But I don't have it. You'd better check with Nia or Declan. Dr. Koss, the bioship you mentioned was based on Sarif studies? Yes, I believe so. Uh, at first I thought it was merely convergent research, but uh, I've worked with Dr. Reed long enough to recognize her handiwork. Uh, besides, I had been working on something similar back in Detroit. And your knowledge of it made you invaluable here. At least to a certain extent, uh, it probably helped us all stay alive. But now with Dr. Shevchenko, I guess we've all become expendable. Except for Dr. Reed, I suppose. Why do you say that? It's more of a general feeling, I guess. Back in Detroit, uh, we all realized that we were on the verge of something groundbreaking. And here, well, everyone seems to view her research as crucial in some way. That might explain why she's being held in a secured area. Possibly. I'm just glad we're going home. It's kind of hard to believe. Sit tight, Dr. Cross. When you feel a vibration from your GPL, set off that distraction. That'll be the signal. I will. Good luck, Mr. Jensen. And hurry. Adam? Adam Jensen? Good grief, lad. What the blaze has happened to you? I made the mistake of surviving. I'm here to get you out, Dr. Faraday. I told Vasily that Seraph wouldn't stop looking. Sevchenko's dead, Dr. Faraday. I'm sorry. I figured as much. One day, he was just gone, and they wouldn't say why. We were all afraid, so we just kept to the work. They forced me to create a signal pattern that could broadcast software upgrades directly into a person's implanted circuitry. Upgrades? That do what? Whatever instructions have been encoded into them. They said it was to improve efficiency at clinics, but that wouldn't be the only application. Far from it. I see. Dr. Faraday, we need to free Megan from the isolation zone. I've got a plan to distract the guards. Three lab accidents. <laughs> I like your style, son. And it just might work if you can get Nia and Eric to agree. But timing them to occur at once, that will be the trick. I'll worry about the timing. For now, sit tight and wait for my signal. There's one thing you're forgetting, lad. They can track our GPL signals. I know. But I'm hoping you might have the solution to that problem. Sevchenko's viral program. Of course! I shouldn't have underestimated you. Vasily gave it to me before he... disappeared. Here you are. Upload it onto the central security computer. It will scramble their scanners. I would have done it myself, but... I'm just a scientist. 
Don't sell yourself short, dog. Any idea who's behind this, Doc? The kidnapping, the facility? Not really. Remarkable, considering I've been here six months. You would have thought someone would let something slip. But if it doesn't have to do with the research, you don't get a word out of them. Sounds like the guards are well trained. But what kind of threats were needed to stop the other researchers from talking? Well, there were threats early on, just to get us to work. Of course, Vasily saw right through that. Kept saying they needed us. I suppose, in his case, the risk outstripped the return at some point. Damn them. Dr. Sevchenko probably knew the risks and accepted them. That he did. Go on, lad. Let's put this plan of yours into action. It's time to teach these wankers a lesson. Tell me, where do I find this security terminal? Vasily told me there's a tunnel leading to it, near the back of the compound, I believe. But I'm afraid you'll have to explore a bit to be sure. Once I upload the virus, it'll be time to act. I'll signal you. A vibration in your GPL. Be ready. Understood, lad. But do be careful. Pritchard, are you still tracking the scientists? Of course. Simulate feedback along that route. Make it strong enough to vibrate their implants. They have to feel it. A signal, eh? Not bad, Jensen. I'm sending it now. Your tenacity, Adam Jensen, is really quite irritating. We'd like you to stop now. I'm afraid I can't, Zell. You see, I figured it out. I know what you and your conspiracy buddies are planning. Do you? How clever. A new biochip. A software upgrade that limits what augmentations can do. You're creating a kill switch. You kidnap Megan Reed's team to do it, and you're seizing control of the market to ensure it gets distributed. All because you're afraid of people like me. Augmented people, with the power to resist you. No one's afraid of you, Mr. Jensen. All your blundering around and childish interference hasn't stopped a thing. Tell me, have you been to a limb clinic lately? Let me guess. That was supposed to shut me down, right? Leave me broken and begging? 
The Orgs are recalled. You should be offline! <laughs> Women never fail to underestimate men. You should have stayed dead, Jensen. Come closer, Jensen! Do I sense desperation, Jensen? Did you lose your nerve, Jensen? Now that the end is near? How can a man be so clear? Right over here, my friend. Come get me. Jaren, is that you? Not exactly. Adam? Oh my god, Adam! It's you. You're hurt. What happened? What happened to you? I risked my life for you, Megan. I came halfway around the world, and for what? It's not what you think. Are you part of this? No! No, Adam, I swear it! The kidnapping was real. The attack on Seraph Industries, they came after me. They wanted my research. And when did you decide they could have it? It didn't happen like that. I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't. I couldn't! And then David said we had to use it. We owed it to mankind. David? What are you talking about? My great discovery. The genetic framework I found that makes it easier for living tissue to bond with implants. I found it. In you, Adam. I used your DNA. I wanted to tell you, I swear. But David convinced me what it could mean for mankind. How much better off we could all be. It took Hugh to make me see how wrong I was. Hugh? Hugh Darrow. He owns this facility. After Namir brought us here- Richard! Patch me into Seraph, now! Adam, please! He was only pretending to work with Tai Young and the others. He found out what they were planning to do and told them he would help. But only to make sure they never succeeded. Their control signal won't work. Thank you, David. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Saraf here has asked me to show the world how human enhancement technology can change it. After careful deliberation, I've decided I must do exactly that. Forgive me. Oh god, he's modified the control signal. Anyone with the new biochip will be affected. Hugh never said anything about this. I'm going back for the scientists. No, Adam! I know the complex better than you. I'll find them. There's a hangar bay through there. Get to its control room and retract the roof. Clear a path for us.
Jensen, what the hell's going on out there? Broadcast frequencies are going haywire. Malik, is that you? Where are you? Coming into visual range of Singapore now. Been in the air since Pritchard first pinged you. Good timing. I'm heading for a hangar bay to open the roof. I'll need an emergency extraction. Roger that. I'm on my way. Hey, Jensen! Looks like you could use some help! I see the scientist, Jensen. I'm landing nearby. And I think... Dr. Reed wants to speak to you. Hang on. Hello? Adam? We're all fine, but you have to get to Panchea and stop Hugh. You and I aren't done with this, Megan. I know how it looks. But you have to stop the broadcast. I think it's causing the new biochips to overstimulate the vagus nerve, creating terrifying hallucinations. You mean it's driving augmented people insane? Yes. And it's up to you to stop it. Use the Leo shuttle. It will take you to Panchea. Good luck, Adam. Automated systems online. Darrow Sequence 1, Code 1, 1A, preset and ready to engage. Suborbital trajectory plotted. Destination, Panchea. Begin countdown, Mr. Darrow. Begin countdown. Code, 0, 0, 0. Confirm, 0. Countdown commencing. Jensen. Jensen, can you read me? Barely. I've reached Panchea, Pritchard. Any word from Sarah for the UN delegates? Nothing. The installation went into lockdown shortly after Darrow gave his speech. I can't tell if anyone's even alive. And the signal's still broadcasting. Meaning no one's safe till I get in there and shut it down. You'll have to disengage the lockdown first. Look for a master control panel at the top of the tower. I don't think you want to do that, Mr. Jensen. Disengage lockdown, and whatever demons this station contains are likely to come crashing out on us. Afraid to die, Darrow? Or just unwilling to face what you've done? Oh, I know what I've done, believe me. I take no pleasure in it. And yet you still did it. I did what had to be done. Twenty years ago, I gave the world augmentation technology. I thought I was giving it a bright future, 
but instead I gave it the means to destroy itself. No law, no UN regulation was going to fix that. People are dying out there. Hundreds of thousands of people driven to the brink of insanity because of you. I had to convince the world. Before today, people believed we should steal fire from the gods and redesign human nature. But human nature is the only thing we have that gives us a moral compass and the social skills we need to live in peace. You destroy it, and you destroy our very species. Don't paint yourself a savior in this. What you're doing is insane. Is it? When this is done, the Illuminati won't be able to control men and women like you as they had planned from the inside out. No one will be able to use the technology I invented to make others into beings they desire. Something we both know has happened already. You think you're Frankenstein? Killing his own monster? Actually, Mr. Jensen, I prefer to think of myself as Daedalus, watching helplessly as his child crashes into the sea. I'm ending this. Now. You can't. The signal is being generated from the broadcast center at the base of this facility. Pancea's security system has been programmed to protect it, and will kill you before you even get close. You designed that system, Darrow. You can tell me how to shut it down. But I won't. You think what I'm doing is extreme. You simply don't understand. For humanity to survive beyond this century, it must abandon ill-conceived notions about transcendence and embrace change. But for that to happen, the hard lesson must be learned. Blood must be shed. You think humanity needs to be punished, is that it? Pain is the only thing people understand. By the time this is over, there will be no humanity left to embrace your change. The stress and horror you forced us to live through will have ripped it out of us. I... I knew there would be casualties, but I thought, over time, surely the human spirit can recover. History has shown us again and again that the human race is hidebound and governed by inertia. As a society, as a species, the only way to elicit any kind of reaction from it is through an act of tragedy, a horrible cataclysm. I regret what I have been forced to do, but given what I know about mankind and the dangers facing us, this was the only viable choice. You've convinced yourself you're right, but whatever moral high ground you're standing on is nothing but a stack of innocent victims. You're trying to justify genocide. All your talk about ethics and ideals doesn't mean a damn compared to that. Is that the best argument you can produce? Ethics and morality are as fluid and changeable as any human conceit. I'm disappointed to see you are so naive. Look at everything that has happened since this technology developed. Search your heart. You know as well as I do that humanity is on a downward spiral. Torn apart from within because people like you can't resist the temptation to play God with your own evolution. Can't you see why we must take the temptation away? You know, I've always wondered about that leg brace of yours. Why the father of augmentation doesn't have the most basic of implants. Doesn't make much sense, really. Unless he's one of the few people genetically incompatible with this technology. <laughs> Gotta love the irony in that. It's the kind of irony that can tear you up inside, bit by bit, every day, until you find yourself despising what you're not. How dare you? You think I've done all this because... Because a fluke of nature robbed me of my chance to become a part of it? I tried everything, damn you! Everything I could think of to change! None of it worked! None of it! So you had to fix it, didn't you? Take back control, make it like it never was. Yes! Yes, that's exactly what I... What I... I... What have I done? 
Give me the codes, Daryl. Help me stop this. You'll still be in danger. Panchea's security system, much of it is self-determining and lethal. But if you succeed, if these codes help you turn off the system and reach the broadcast center, tell the world exactly why I did it. Explain to them about the Illuminati, the biochip, Panchea. Help them understand that the technology I created will not be a future any one of us desires. Richard, the lockdown's disengaged. I'm heading back to the hangar to see if those blast doors are open. Have you been able to raise anyone? I'm picking up several glimmers, but there's too much interference. I... I think you're... on your own, Jensen. Careful there, Francis. You almost sound like you regret that. Thank God you came. I've got wounded here. We'll have to move them first. We can't move anyone yet. Not until I get to the base of the station and shut down Darrow's broadcast. What? Why? The chaos you experienced here? It's everywhere. The Illuminati created a biochip that stops people from using enhanced abilities, and Darrow turned it into a kill switch. Oh my God, you... We gotta fix this, Adam. If people realize what's happened, if they believe augmentation technology created this chaos, they'll ban human enhancement research forever. And that would be a bad thing. Yes, it would! Don't you see what's at stake here? Ever since man first crawled out of that ocean, we've been striving to be more than we are. Augmentation technology is just the latest, greatest step on a very long road. But we've barely scratched the surface of its potential. We can't let fear stop us from continuing. That's your belief, Seraph. Not everyone shares it. But you do, Adam. I know it. But if we work together, we can really make a difference. We can improve the lives of everyone, but only if we fix this. Go on. We'd have to get a message out. After you shut down Hugh's signal. Tell the world. Tell them the Humanity Front did this. That their doctors created a virus that only affects augmented people. You mean lie. Uh, it'll give us time, son. Time to figure out how to destroy the Illuminati's biochips and move on. And what about the people who've been hurt by this? Don't they deserve the truth? I had them. If we want the freedom to become more than we are, we can't be blinded by a misguided morality. Some people will be left behind. It's reality. It's evolution, son. Right. Evolution based on my DNA. Please, son, you have to stay with me on this. I'll think about it. Mr. Jensen, how ironic that you should be the one to save us from the monsters out there. Monsters, Taggart? You mean people. Augmented people who've lost all control, lost their reason. Isn't that supposed to be my line? Unfortunately, it seems your esteemed Mr. Darrow decided to appropriate my point and turn it back on me. In madness and in blood. He has betrayed us all. So you finally admit it. You are part of this, after all. You have been all along. It would be pointless to deny anything now, but... Despite what you think of us, we never wanted augmentations outlawed. All we've ever sought is regulation, rules governing how the technology is developed, and laws that ensure it's used for the good of society. You've raised society above humanity. So who gets to make those rules? Men with wisdom, strength, and tenacity to know what's right. Proven leaders who distinguish themselves like, like you, Mr. Jensen. You've certainly earned the right to be one of us. All you have to do is take it. I'm not looking for glory, Taggart. Just remember that without control, there's no room for freedom, only anarchy. 
You were a policeman once. You know the importance of order. I know there's a difference between order and slavery. The biochip wasn't supposed to force people to do anything. It merely limited power so that people couldn't go on killing sprees like the ones taking place right now. Amazing how well that worked out. Say what you will, but I know that some part of you agrees with me. Absolute freedom is no different than absolute chaos. Society needs boundaries if it has any hope of surviving. And you, Mr. Jensen, can be the one to give us that hope. Shut down Darrow's signal. Then help me get a message out saying that an accident at VersaLife contaminated the world's neuropazine supply. VersaLife? And what if I decided to blame the Illuminati? The Illuminati is just a name to get rich financiers to invest more money. Besides, do you really think the world will believe in some 18th century conspiracy theory? Do this for us, and you'll ensure a future for mankind, all of mankind, augmented or otherwise. The future Hugh Darrow offers doesn't allow for both. Let me think about it. What the hell? Zhao, what are you doing? Connecting to Panchea's Hiron project, Mr. Jensen. The most advanced quantum computer slave to the human brain, and the closest to perfection we'll ever achieve. I'm going to use it to hack Daryl's signal and rework the message to our benefit. Our benefit? You mean the Illuminati's? Someone has to override the signal and be the world's savior. And let's be honest, neither of us would trust anyone else to fill that role. Computer, begin EEG sync. So much pain. Sinking beta waves at 40 cycles per second. Sleep, please. Happy Incompatible master slave changes. Alert. Unable to transfer control to our heart. Uh, the system won't recognize my chip. Neural systems offline. Rerouting control of the energy. I can't control Iron! Increasing winter neighborhoods from 32%. Zhao, get them out of there. I have to reach the control chamber. No! I can feel control! I can control! Stop the signal! Security alert. Through the primary control panel. Oh shit. Discharge sequence. Down, 
Welcome to the edge. It is not the end of the world, but you can see it from here. Eliza? What are you doing here? It is my job to monitor and report on the news, Adam. Before Darrow smothered everything with his signal, the whole world was tuned into this place, including me. The broadcast. I have to stop it. I know. Please, come closer. Do you know where we are, Adam? We are at the fulcrum point, when society lies in the balance. Hugh Darrow hoped to tip the scales one way, by telling the world everything you already know. About the biochip, the Illuminati, everything. He believed knowing the truth would convince mankind to abandon research into human enhancement technologies forever. It would certainly give them reason to fear it. Indeed. Daryl's confession is ready to send. If you want, I can wideband it across all media as soon as you shut down the signal. Everything you worked so hard to uncover will be exposed. But only if you deactivate the broadcast using this control. However, if you desire I can alter Daryl's message. Conceal the creation of the biochip while putting in new content. Content blaming the humanity front. Like Seraph suggested. The organization has already admitted to harboring terrorists. It would be easy to convince people they turn to biological warfare in a more desperate attempt to get rid of augmented people. But why? What would that achieve? In time, it could shift the focus of hatred onto people whose prejudices are seen as too extreme, leaving corporations free to experiment with human evolution as they desire. But if you want me to perform this edit for you, you must disengage the signal and activate the video edit function from here. Alternatively, Darrow's message can be adjusted to erase all mention of the power group known as the Illuminati. I can report that lack of proper regulation allowed vast quantities of neuropazine to become contaminated prior to reaching the market. Taggart's preference. You think the world will buy a made-up story about neuropazine poisoning? You might be surprised by what people believe. I can convince them. And having experienced the negative effects of corporate negligence firsthand, a majority of people might force the world to place harsh restrictions on all human enhancement research. But only if you disengage the signal and activate the video edit function from here. Of course, there is another option. This passage leads to Panchea's pressure regulation controls. Destroy them and the installation will cave in on itself, overwhelmed by the weight of the ocean pressing against it. Everyone inside the structure will die. That's a solution? No one will be left to tell the world what happened, Adam. Nobody will be able to spin the story. Including me. The choice is yours. 
Do you believe you have the wisdom to choose an appropriate future for mankind? Or do you trust mankind to find the answers on its own? If you do this, the unadulterated truth in Darrow's confession may well convince mankind to cast all science and technology aside, to ensure that future generations grow up free and whole. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Albert Einstein said, Technological progress is like an axe in the hands of a pathological criminal. Took me a while, but I finally see his point. How often have we chased the dream of progress only to see it perverted? More often than not, haven't the machines we built to improve life shattered the lives of millions? And now we want to turn that dream on ourselves to fundamentally improve who we are. Experience has shown me how dangerous that can be. How many times in the call of duty did I almost fall into the trap of taking shortcuts, abusing my abilities or the resources at hand? I resisted, barely at times, because I valued human lives and considerations. Can I truly despise others who fall? Technology offers us strength. Strength enables dominance, and dominance paves the way for abuse. Darrow understood this. He knew that using technology to become something more than we are risks losing our ability to love, aspire, or make moral choices. The very things that make us human. It also risks giving some men the power to make others what they choose, regardless of the cost to human dignity. The suffering Darrow inflicted is not the end of the world. It is merely the seed for change. And change never comes without pain. You worry too much, Morgan. There's nothing we can't manage, given time. She's here. I have to cut this short. Keep going through the wreckage. Maybe we'll find something we can use for the Morpheus Initiative. Come in! Dr. Reed! We're so pleased you decided to join us. Where else could I go? No regrets, my dear. As Ariadne told Theseus before he entered the Minotaur's Labyrinth, always forward, never left or right. You'll be very interested in our current project. We're breaking new ground. Yes, the nanite virus chimera is quite intriguing. I'm looking forward to seeing the hybrid project up close, Mr. Page. And so you shall. But please, call me Bob. <laughs>